I'm old IJ. We're here doing it again. We're trying to provide the best content for y'all. If you can make it in New York City, you can make it anywhere. If you can make it through a Modi Live, you can go, hey, you can go to work. You can work a 10 hour shift. You can work. You can do whatever you want to do in life. You just got it. That's all you got to do. Now, a suit does a lot for you. We're in for another three, four, five, six, seven, ten hour live.
does a lot for an image. You gotta be able to pull it off. You see the hotel, rock star lifestyle. We do it. So no one break a show down like I break a show down. Hit the like button. Hit the button. Doing it for y'all, man. We got a new microphone. Does it, does it sound good? Is the mic all right? We got the new mic. I didn't do a mid. They thought Bo, they thought Bo ain't had to do it. that like button hit that subscribe button yesterday we were talking about the mistakes that everyone made throughout the season now i left tate and davis off of there but i said we're not going to leave them out so today i put this together and we're going to talk about the dark underworld of being professionals now I don't know if anybody's seen this or not, but you guys can tell me if you have or not once I play it. Oh, and just a heads up, this is Mo IJ. This is not IRS agent Moses. No, 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 this is Mo. Moses don't get like this, you know what I mean? We share the same glasses, but he don't get like this. Let me know, have you guys seen this? When your lawyer tells you. Because it fell on my lap today. I never seen it, but here we go. When your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen. You need to do exactly as I say. It's unethical. We must fuck. There are consequences to getting caught. I love working with you three. Cash always clears. Mm. 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 See, when you're good to the universe, the universe is good back. I had this live playing last night. That's why I left them off. And then someone sent me this. And I said, oh, crazy. But see, a suit does a lot for an image. But to, to those that are still watching, like you and I, we know who you really are. We'll play it one more time. You see somebody else with it, you know you seen it first. You know you seen it first. I don't know how I got a hold of it, but it came to me. They said, huh, have you seen this? I said, what is this? I said, oh, let me show that on the live. When your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen. You need to do exactly as I say. It's unethical. We must fuck. There are consequences to getting caught. I love working with you three. Cash always clears. Boom. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> Davis McLean. Now, we know that Davis has two brothers. Somehow they both got the name of Theo. One looked like Red Man and the other one, I don't know who this guy is. But he has a brother named Theo. What up, Valerie? He has a brother named Theo. Now, we're hearing that maybe this charge should have been his because Sax is doing a little bit of digging. But how deep... Is he rooted into the streets? Hmm. How deep was Davis actually into the streets? Because he knows a lot. He's giving Tariq. He's giving Tariq the game. He's letting Tariq know this is what you need to do. You need to move a little smarter. Just because you got a suit on, they don't really care. So Davis McLean, and we know what he's doing with 
Miss Angry Face, Monet. Is he really in the streets or is he legit? At this moment, if you had if you had to decide which side is Davis on, is Davis, well, he just said it was it was illegal, a little ethical, but if you were to judge Davis off the episodes we've seen in the last two seasons, would you think that he was like gang banging or he may have made a mistake and his brother took the charge? Or do y'all think that he was really in the streets? I believe Davis knew two bit. Remember their conversation? That was the first season. See, that's the thing about Davis. If Davis is this powerful, everybody knows he's been doing this for a while in New York City. So he had to be around. Like if they wanted to do a backstory, he could have ran into James St. Patrick. Even though he acts like he don't know him, but he heard of the name. So he's been around for a while. But do you think he was out like in the streets? Excuse me. Him and James about the same age. Were they out in the streets together? They probably didn't run into each other, but. He was doing wrong. He was in the streets. See, that's what I'm thinking, too. I'm thinking he may have been all the way in. I'm talking about all the way in. I ain't talking knee deep. I'm talking all the way in. I'm talking you got to stand on tiptoes. <laughs> yeah. It looked like he was at the point where, you know, in cartoons where they going up under the water, they talk about three, and then they stick their hand back up, giving you a countdown of when they're going to drown instead of sticking their head back about, uh, above the water. It seemed like Davis may have been all the way in the game. If he did, that's a nice 180 he pulled. Now, it only took his brother going down for it, allegedly. Allegedly. Because I ain't seen no paperwork. Sack seen it. I ain't seen it. Jacoby said Davis was probably in the streets, but wasn't called to where it would mess him up at being a lawyer. See, that's what I'm saying. Because did this happen when he was like a minor? Did they mention how old Davis was when this case happened? Or it was just back in the day? I could, I don't know. I can't remember. See, JoJo, that's what, oh, he, Jacoby said he was 21. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Davis McLean, let's see what we know on him. Davis McLean, Shadow Whack. 21 or 22. What up, Shakar? Uh, let's see. Uh, Davis McLean, blah, 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 blah. Date of birth, 1982. 1982, so he's what, 37? He's 40 years old. Does it say when he took the charge? Un okay, it says uh unnamed gangster murdered him. Hold on, unnamed gangster. Okay, murdered him possibly in a gang robbery, and his older brother took the fall for the murder. But they don't tell us. Hmm. So it was the mid two thousands, about mid two thousand, early two thousands. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, once we find out more, but it did say it was a gang rivalry, so he was in the streets. Maybe if he took this charge, it would have definitely been over. He wouldn't have been able to get his license. He would have had me to go down there and do the bar. <laughs> Kendall saying 2003, 2004. Yeah, that'd be all right. 
then. So his brother been in since like the 2000s, about 20 years. Let me see. Do they have a date on his brother? He helped free two bit testify against Cooper Sacks. Does it say? Took down Sacks, betray, help Zeke. Oh, this is just his goals. But he, he oh, they completed those. All right. He used to be a gang member. He used to be a gang member and drug dealer until he left the game and became legit. He seems to be the only gangster who was able to leave the game as other characters like Ghost and Crystal Ball are dead in jail. See, that's what I was saying. He was running around when Ghost and then was running around. Hmm, interesting. Is there something Davis isn't telling us about working directly with Tariq? He knows Tariq getting an inheritance. Uh oh. Uh oh. We might need the Davis spinoff. We need to know a little bit more. All right. So he was out in the streets. That's what I like to see some kind of connections, but not a close connection. Probably knew about him. And that might be one reason he's working directly with Tariq. What up, Big Wolf? Hmm. So now I see why it's so easy for him to take on all these clients, even though some of the shit that they doing is wrong. Because, hey, like my boy Cecil Williams said, the best lawyer in Kansas City. Man, <laughs> your best clients. <laughs> Not the ones that are innocent because they only expect one outcome. You want the ones that did the crime. You a lawyer, you want the people that did the crime because they're going to pay that money. They desperate. They need your help. So, Davis McLean, you fitting in. Okay. See, we really needed this back dive. You know what I'm saying? It ain't a back door because hey, we ain't we ain't trying to set them up. It's just a back dial. Like, oh wait, well, let's let, let's dive into the back. Let's go into the back. You know that box that they have in the back of the store with all the shit that nobody wanted. You go back there and you look through it. You know, the, most of the time they bring it out the clearance rack, but some of the employees take it in the back so they can keep it for themselves. Yeah, so they can put their discount on top of that. Yeah, we know what y'all doing back there. But that's all we doing. Just 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 doing a little digging. Did any of y'all know that he was a gang member and a drug dealer and a killer? Did y'all know he was all three? I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought maybe Davis was just wilding out, shot somebody. Whole time. Whole time. He's out there killing niggas, slinging rock. Hmm. Yes, yeah, Zay. Hey, you seen the thumbnail? Mm hmm. Davis told us, man. Davis told us. The soup does a lot for an image, but it won't fool the people still watching. Now, we just found out that Davis was a gang member. I didn't know he was a gang member. I didn't know he was selling drugs. I kind of had a gut feeling he was shooting some people because we seen the whole Theo thing, but a drug dealer? A gang member? Not Davis. Not Davis. Hmm. Hmm. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Right now, we just unearthed Davis McLean was slanging rock, gang banging, and killing. All I thought was maybe he had a manslaughter, but Mr. Manslaughter is Lorenzo. No. Davis is Mr. Body Snatcher. Turned him to a booty clapper. All right, Davis. See? That's why I fuck with Davis. I told y'all, man, I like Davis's character. All right. I told y'all last season I'd be an assistant for Davis. All right, Davis. See, I like what he did. We need more brothers like this in life that are able to 
make mistakes, but turn it around. Yeah, he may have killed somebody. I, I'm sorry. He did. It. It's unfortunate. But now he's trying to keep other black people from going down the same path he went down. Sometimes a second chance is all you need. Theo, thank you for taking that charge. Theo, we appreciate everything you did because if you didn't do that for Davis, there's no telling how far he would have made it. Born in 82, dead in 05. We don't know. So we, on behalf of Mo and the Moets, we appreciate you and we wish nothing but the best for you, Theo. We want you to come home. So we're going to be saying free Theo till it's backwards. Theo free. Theo, thank you for everything you've done. The 20 years of your service. Because Davis McLean is single-handedly cleaning up these streets. And right now, he's dealing with the Tejadas, the St. Patrick's, <laughs> and his home partner, Cooper Sacks. So now, it's up to our brother to take his street tactics and apply it. Apply it to the civil and criminal courts. Hmm. A suit does a lot for an image, but it won't fool the people still watching. Tariq St. Patrick, I'm watching. Blanca's watching. Sax is watching. Jenny's watching. They all know you've done fucked up shit in life. They're after you. Davis, Sax is watching. No one else knows about this information, but Sax is watching. Just because you wear this suit, we just found out that you were in the streets doing your thing, getting it in. I'm talking quarter brick, half a brick, whole brick, A. We don't know what happened in that. We don't know what happened in that murder. It may have been a self-defense. We don't know. New York got some some wonky laws. I don't know how it go down up there. We don't know what happened. I ain't read it. All I know is that it was a brother that was between 6'2 and 6'3. And the Theo we've seen, he about 6'0. <laughs> he said, get, get him a new liver. <laughs> read Cheryl's comment. My bad. Cheryl said, look at all the underground connections Davis has. He was able to sell that blue diamond and everything. That's true. But I think for the, the diamond... Would, would that be a legit, though, going to the auction? But you're right, though. You might have to know somebody because a diamond that big, people would know if it was stolen or missing. Like the last known whereabouts about this big-ass 5.2 carat that sold for 5.5 million rings was bought by one Dante Snitch, Mecca, Spears. How'd he get this damn diamond ring? So you're right. He may have knew somebody because he well, he did give it to that girl. The girl took it so he wouldn't be the one turning it in and she'd be more trustworthy because she was in it. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's one thing about that power of the dollar. The power of the dollar, boy, it's going to take you a long way. So Davis was a drug dealer slash gangster slash killer. Got it. All right. All right. So the only murder they got connected to Davis outside of the murder that he caught was Mecca. All right. Yeah, Davis did tell him, all right, Sax, I did it, man. I had to. What would you do, man? What would you do if your brother did it? Man, I still wouldn't have said nothing. That's one place I disagree with Davis. After Sachs came and said, what happened, man? You got to tell me the truth. I'm not telling him the truth. Get Theo out of there. All we got to do is show him that Theo was 6'2", 6'3". He didn't do it. Case is back open, but, man, we're just going to lay low. I can run circles and laps around him. Just get him out. You got to be con uh, affiliated or connected to get in that. Soft bees. Man, I don't know what that is. I'll never go in there. <laughs> I ain't got that kind of money. 
Tracy said the diamond move was shady. Yeah. That's just too much money to be moving at one time. You might just have to sell the diamond by itself. Uh, I guess the band and get like another diamond set in it or something, but man, that's a lot of money. Hey, thank you to Marcus for that $10. It would be crazy if Davis took up Burke brother. Hold on. If Davis took up Burke's brother in raising Canaan. Burke's brother in raising Canaan to tie the dots. Burke's brother was a he was a cop. Hmm. Oh, Sutterbees. I don't know, man. Y'all know I can't read. <laughs> I ain't good with names. Is is Burke's brother dead? Her brother died in the line of duty. Hmm. Cause not to get ahead of ourselves, isn't a character coming next season? Like his significant other or something died. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think, I don't think Burke's brother was killed, was he? Man, I can't tell. I can't. I ain't gonna lie to you. All I know is her daddy was a top dog, and she just doing it just because. Miles said a blood diamond, maybe. Diamonds are forever, forever. I mean, it might be. But really what it's looking like, it's just more of Noma was upset with whatever the hell Dante was doing, talking about we were engaged. How are y'all engaged? He ain't never give you that ring. He's about to go off with Monet. But now Davis is connected to all this nonsense because of Monet. She said that's why she became a cop. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When it came to Detective Burke's story, her family issues and matters, I didn't care about. I just wanted to see what she was gonna do with Juke and if she was ever gonna catch Kanan. <laughs> it's like the coyote chasing the road runner. She be on it too. She be trying all her tactics and be failing. What we see from Davis this week? Oh, the whole phone. So Davis is connected, but he he doesn't seem to be able to do anything else because he's dealing with the damn Tejadas. And every time you look up, Monet is doing bullshit. As smart as Davis is, it's like he's he's slipping up right now. You know what I mean? It's like he's getting out of character trying to deal with Monet and them because he can't be like legit at the moment because these motherfuckers is fucking up. And every time they mess up, it messes up on him and he's connected to some shit. So right now he's really screwed. The only way Davis can get out of this and he ain't going to do it. (laughs) He got to turn in Tasha. I mean, not Tasha. She already turned in. He got to turn in Monet. <laughs> That's the only way David's going to get out of it because he connected to Mecca now. And now Monet is just reeling them in. And now Detective Whitman is on the case. Chasing the bag. See? He going after all his money, but he's slipping up, man. He ain't acting the same. Season one, season two, he was on it. But Monet keep dragging him down this damn hole, and he's slipping up. They even got, we ain't never heard Davis admit to anything. All we seen is like, damn, Davis is holding it down. Man, Sax got in here, and he's like, man, all right, I did it, man. I had to, man. What would you do, man? My brother wouldn't let me take the charge. What do you mean he wouldn't let you take the charge? Nigga, go up there and take the charge. What do you mean someone ain't let you take the charge? Take your ass up there and take the charge. 
I don't want to hear no. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, he ain't let me take the charge. No, nigga, you ain't want that charge. You ain't want that charge. That's what well, he ain't take that charge. You ain't want it. My homeboy shoot somebody. He looking at me. I'm like, you know what, man? Yeah, I'm gonna take that charge. Nigga, please. Hey, good luck, brother, man. As a matter of fact, I don't even know what you did. <laughs> don't tell me nothing. Because if you tell me, that means I got to report it. Because if they come and get me, I'm going to be an accessory because I didn't say nothing. So, nigga, I don't know nothing. I'm denying everything. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you was playing Call of Duty? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know nothing. So when I get on that stand and raise my right hand, they say, Mo, what did you see? I said, I ain't seen nothing. I promise you I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I don't know nothing. ain't seen nothing. God damn it. We almost got him. Now, Davis is in the crowd. He giving me the head now. Like, there you go, Mo. Don't admit to that shit. Yeah, that's true. He is trying to get Theo out of there. Got to get Theo this damn liver. So he's desperate. Davis's weakness is family. Hmm. Hmm. 20 years huh 20 years davis that money's been good hasn't it mm -hmm. you better do everything you can to get theo out of here there you go jd my name is moan i don't know nothing <laughs> what up rd Hmm. All right, since we're bringing we're bringing in Theo, we're saying this because it's his brother. But still, the way he's moving and allowing Tasha to do all this talking, letting Sachs go into the office and finding the phone, it don't seem like he's on top of his game. His brother might be weighing heavy on him. Hmm. Damn. I'm looking over my little brother like, hey, when you go in there, just be strong, man. Just be strong, man. Don't let nobody whoop on you. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. Just go in there, man. Be a man. Do your 20. I'm going to get you out on the back end. Hmm. I do feel like Tasha has him slipping a little bit. And plus, man, Tasha, I mean, not Tasha. Why I keep talking about, oh, we talking about Tasha's son last night. That's why. Oh, yeah, Power Book 5, the spinoff, Tasha Sun dropping the mastermind. I already got four episodes done. <laughs> Davis will be in there. But I think one thing is with Monet doing all this extra talking and shit, making it rough for him, on top of trying to get his brother out of here, it's like, man, you just told them to investigate the family because y'all just, I don't know what y'all did. My name is Davis. I don't know what y'all did, but they just killed a GTG. So this is all the work that Davis is going to have to pile up and try to figure out. Let me sort this. What's the most important? Well, you're going to have to cover up this GTG because if they find out a GTG was killed by a Tejada, once they dig a little bit deeper into the Tejada and find out the Mecca, they're going to know that you and sold the ring that was owned by Mecca. Plus, you, they lawyer, and knew all about this shit. What up, David? In the trailer, Theo's the one that has him held at gunpoint. I thought so. I ain't know. When I first seen it, you know, when they dropped the season three trailer. Before we knew that red man wasn't red man, he was blank man. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck is that? Who is that? Mm. 
Nah, Dean and girl, the theme tonight, a suit can do a lot for one's image. But it won't fool the ones who are still watching. So I put the suit on because we wanted to talk about the dark underworld. Right now, we just found out that Davis McLean was a drug dealer, a gangbanger, and a killer. And right now, he kind of slipping on his game. You know when you're walking through the store, and for some reason, it's a random banana peel in the middle of the aisle, and you didn't see it? You step on it, and all you hear is a cartoon noise. You fall. Yeah. Right now, Monet is Davis McLean's banana peel. She got my dog slipping. My man is supposed to be taking care of business, making some money. We heard him tell Tariq, I like working with you because the check always clears. The money always clears. But now we got to worry about a little more stuff because of Monet. Now, we established that Davis does have connections. He does know some people. We were trying to put together some theories or something of maybe who he was dealing with. He was out in the streets around the same time that James St. Patrick was. He's what, only 10 years younger than Rock? No, no, he was 82. Rock was born in 52. Never mind. <laughs> like 30 years apart. Yeah, Rock was born in 80. No, 52. He's born in 82. Nah, I ain't got no pocket watch. Pocket watch is IRS agent Mose. I got this watch. I got this watch. I went to my cousin's wedding, and this was our gift. I said, boy, you got a lot of money, nigga. You buying everybody watches. You know what I mean? Hey, you can get, get the tux, too. <laughs> nah, I got this at my cousin's wedding, though. When was Ghost born? Uh... All right, uh, hold on. I, I, I'll look it up. Yeah, so Unique is seven years younger than Raquel. Raquel is 52, 48. She like six, seven years, eight years younger than, or 10, some shit like that. Let me see when Ghost was born. Davis was born in 82. Tariq was born in 22. James was born. James is two years older than Davis McLean. I mean, yeah, Jamie. Jamie's two years older than Davis McLean. So he was born in 1980. Tommy born 1980. Kanan is born 75. So he's five years older. Raquel was born 50. Oh, she's 59. I think what's the name is like 48 or 52. One of them. Okay. She's 59. Malcolm Howard was born 54. All right, 54, my bad. What part of New York is Davis from? I don't know. I don't think they – I'm not I'm not going to lie to you, man. Don't get me on here. I, I know a couple of boroughs, but I don't know where they at. Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan, Staten, Uptown. What now? Let's make it happen. <laughs> All right, Diddy, let's make it happen. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. They say Detective Howard is still alive. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. When was Sean born? Sean was born in 
Sean was what, seven years older than Tariq? Sean was 20 years old when he died. What up, OG? Tasha was born in 84, so she was... He died in 2015, 30. So she was 30. Sean was 20. Man, she took advantage of that young boy. Well, Sean didn't die the first season. So Sean was like 18, 19 years old. Oh, Lord, Tasha. Tasha was like 28 years old. Tasha ain't give a fuck. Sean was born in 86. Yeah, Tasha's 84. James and Tommy are in 80. So me and Tasha the same age. Well, she was born a year before me. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that he wasn't legal or nothing. I'm just saying, man, she was throwing the young boy's son. I remember them days. I remember them days. When was Yaz born? Yaz was born like 19, I mean, like 2021. Yaz was born in 2010, so she like 12, 13 now. <laughs> Damn, look how small she was when we first seen her on screen. <laughs> she was just a baby. <laughs> Who said 84 is old? Nah, 84, that means she'd be 38. So Davis is three years younger than Ghost. No, two years younger. Oh, okay, cool. Y'all think they were around? Because what? Canaan and them grew up in Queens, right? Jamaica, Queens, right? Hmm. So they may have not been on the same um uh, in the same borough. Uh that's uh that's fandom not wiki. So to give you like the character breakdowns, well, like if you just want to recap of what they done, you know, I get information on there, like they birth dates. Every now and then I just get on there and just click on some names and just read some random stuff about them. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Canaan and them were from Queens. Canaan from Queens. Tejadas are in Brooklyn. Wait, no. Are the Tejadas in Brooklyn? I thought the four Gs are in Brooklyn. Or are they in the Bronx? Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I can't even remember now. All right, so Tahana's are from Brooklyn. I saw uh, Breeze's information. Uh, I may have read it, but I I don't I don't even know what they like. I, can, I don't know who Breeze is going to be. Unique, unique brother. Who knows? Davis might be Breeze. Davis is two years younger <laughs> than James St. Patrick. Maybe he went back in time and just, I don't even know who Breeze is going to be, man. Breeze might be the uh, the Italian boss in Raising Canaan, episode, I mean, season three. We don't even know, man. It's best to just leave it a mystery. At this point, we're doing just fine with the show. So I, if we don't see them, then it's like, all right, cool. Because I ain't going to lie to you. Not once during these three seasons did I think who Breeze was. You know what I mean? Yeah, she said her sons had a, uh, what she said, a small foothold in Brooklyn.
So where do the Jihadists live right now? And where's Davis's, I'm not Davis, where's uh, Dante's, Dante's condo is in uh, Midtown, it's in Manhattan. See, man, y'all, y'all giving me a lot of history lesson over there. Or I don't know nothing about the, the New York geography. <laughs> All right, so which one is the best to be in? If I was to go move to New York, I know it's expensive. I ain't going to do it. But where would be the best place for me to move? I ain't trying to be around and like, well, y'all got them rats everywhere. No disrespect. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be outside walking down the block and getting attacked, man. Y'all know I got a fear of getting bit on my ankle, man. Zombies, dogs, babies. So I'd be damned if a rat gets slashed on. Them things is big up there. Tejada's in Queens. Mecca's penthouse is in Manhattan. The boys work out in Brooklyn. Okay, okay. We finding our way around here. All right, hey. Hit the cash app, M-O-E-D-O-T-J. I'm going to try to get a... uh, How much y'all think Dante's condo would go for? You know what I mean? (laughs) How much you think, hey... Just support the channel. I'm going to go rent out the, the condo that they got for Dante. I'm going to go rent that out, and we're going to be doing the lives from in there, all right? <laughs> Don't worry. We we're covered. Davis is going to get the insurance for me with all the connections he got. We're going to be good to go. Now, there, I heard there is a little door in the back with some guns. I'm going to try to get in there. Eight to ten. Well, well, I take that back, y'all. I take that back, man. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta put nothing in the cash out. We ain't get, if we get five to ten, ain't five m's, man. You know what I'm doing with five m's? Now let's just say I got six m's. Let's just say I got six m's. You know what I'm doing with six m's? I'm about to go buy a diamond ring with a blue diamond in it. I don't give. I'm not scared of no more. I'm not scared. I'm about to go buy that ring. I'm about to be stunting. I'm gonna have that motherfucker on the pinky. They be like, damn, what is that? So there's a panky, a little panky ring. Damn. I'm really going to have to get out here in the streets. I'm going to have to pull a Tariq St. Patrick in order to pay Davis to make sure, hey, man, tell the landlord I'll be good next week, man. Just tell him, tell the landlord. All I was trying to do was get a room and uh, we finally got a piece of the- that's all i was trying to do that's all i was trying to do they talk about eight to ten i say eight to ten i mean i could buy half of kansas city for eight to ten million (laughs) dollars i go back home with eight to ten i'm rich as a motherfucker i'm about to have my own gym in the house everything I'm about to have a 19 car garage with four cars. That's how much money I'm going to have in Kansas City if I had eight to 10. Get your insurance from Markeisha? Hell no. Markeisha, man, I wouldn't have no homeowner's insurance. Man, we'd be having tornadoes back at home, shit, tear the roof off. The insurance she gave me only covers water damage, but it has to be seawater. It's like, we don't have no seawater out here. What about the floods from like the lakes in the Missouri River? Oh, well, our insurance is only for ocean water. Markeisha, why the fuck would you sell me ocean water insurance when I'm in the middle of the map? Oh, well, I didn't know. Hold on. Let me look it up. Hey, what is the flood damage insurance for Missouri? Oh, we don't have that. Y'all ain't got flood damage for Missouri. Why did you sell me water damage then, Markeisha? I, you know what? We had a good thing. Don't know if I'm going to see you again. I'm talking to your supervisor. Where's your, where's your supervisor? Because you know what? I'm calling Davis McLean. Davis, we need to sue GSI Insurance in Detroit, Michigan. Because their employees are fraudulently selling us shit that don't matter to anything pertaining to the Kansas City regional environment. 
uh Davis, I want one hundred million dollars from them niggas. Mm-hmm. You gotta have Davis on your side if you're buying insurance for Marquisha. That's the only way you're gonna be able to get out of that because they definitely not gonna acknowledge it when you try to go in court. Talking about man, they sold me sea damage. I mean, uh, <laughs> seawater damage. See, Davis is gonna look through the fine print and it's gonna say just water. And one of the sentences is just gonna say water. It ain't gonna have seawater in front of it. And right there, you're gonna get the whole case dismissed. Right there, you're gonna win all your money. You won. The judge is gonna be looking like that. Well, y'all did just put water in one sentence. So is it just water for that situation or for everything? Boom, we throw it out a hundred M's. Now Davis talking about man, you gotta let me get 10. I'm looking at Davis like, come on, man, it's me. And I'm giving them 15. I just want a hundred M's. Man, you got an extra five, man. Plus, I'm going to need you around when I'm up in New York doing my thing. You know what I mean? When I'm up in New York doing my thing, dipping in and out the traffic. Because they told me, they told me that the penthouses is eight to ten. Matter of fact, give me two of them. I want two of them. I want the, the penthouse below it and the penthouse above it. So I want three of them. Yeah. But we don't have a penthouse up under it. <laughs> yeah, well, y'all better figure out how to make it one. <laughs> I'm on a mall. When you're low so what you think about this? We talking about Davis making the calls. Yeah, I know it's already a double floor. That's why I said they don't have one up under it. You better make it, meaning the two floors up under it. Figure it out. Cut a hole through the floor. Put some stairs in there or something. I want them both. I want them all. Yeah, that floor down there, that's going to be for like the fam. That's where they're going to be kicking it. Now, I'm going to be living up in the big one. But the fam, when they come through, they got the bottom ones. It's really two floors. They just cut a hole in it. But you know how it is. But here comes some of Davis's street talk. Now, I don't know what episode this is from. All I know is it fell on my lap today. So, When your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen. You need to do exactly as I say. It's unethical. It's there are consequences to getting caught. I love working with you three. Cash always clears. Boom. Your lawyer. You see, they mixing up a little bit of it because the boom we already seen happen. But it looks like this might all be from the episode that's coming up. Who do you think gave Davis the information that they were potentially about to go to a war? Was it Monet? Like, hey, man, shit's getting out of hand. Monet's like, hey, we need to start watching our back because of this little war or something. You see what I'm saying? Like, or did, did Tariq tell him, hey, man, they got us moving guns now? Oh, yeah, we be in Club True two-stepping. Step, step, side to side. <laughs> So if your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen to him. Hmm. I could see Tariq saying, hey, Davis, they they want us to be moving some guns. Davis like, what? He said, yeah, and the people that we were supposed to be selling to, they, they robbed us. Davis said, nigga. Mo was just explaining all the stress that I'm going through with goddamn Monet Tejada. Now you about to start a war? Theo, Monet, Tariq. How did I get stuck with all three of these fools?
Tariq about to start a war. Monet telling the police to go investigate people that they killed for a murder that her husband did. Man, when I tell you Davis, hey, see, y'all last night y'all were laughing around. Y'all were laughing. Ha ha. Cecil Williams ain't putting in no work. Cecil Williams seen over a hundred thousand people. They said, Mo, oh, that's rookie numbers. It's the third season, and all we seen Davis do is work with three people. Cecil was way, way hard of a worker. Cecil said he see four to five clients every day. All he do is deal with Tasha and Tariq. Cecil was working. Now, I'm not taking away from Davis because Davis is making a lot of money. Definitely making a lot of money. You need versus greed. Does he need to be helping them through all of this nonsense? No. That greed will make you do some things. that agree to make you do some things and right now he really doesn't have an option he really doesn't have an option he just has to go along with all this street shit but a soup does a lot for an image it won't fool the people still watching it won't fool us. It won't. They said, who doing the fool over there? Mo doing the fool. Nah, they ain't fooling me. You ain't fool fool. Nah, who doing the fool? You can't fool the people that been watching. No matter how much money Tariq makes. No matter how many rollies he put on that wrist. It ain't fooling nobody. It ain't fooling nobody, Tariq. You know why? It's simple. Mastermind. Tasha's son. You ain't going to get nowhere. You ain't going to get nowhere because of the mastermind. You basing your whole life off the mastermind. When you need to be listening to Davis... You got to understand, Davis is only two years younger than Ghost. He was out there doing the same thing as Ghost. He was catching bodies. Allegedly, James St. Patrick told on Canaan. Allegedly. Allegedly. I don't know. They said, well, we ain't seen no paperwork. All right, we ain't seen no paperwork. But allegedly, he did. Davis ain't telling nobody. Davis called a body. Davis went to law school. Davis was two years younger than James and lived six years longer. Davis is moving and grooving, baby. Davis is moving and grooving. All right. Out of the two. If you're Davis, which do you think is going to be the most work for you? The Tasha case? I mean, not the Tasha. God, why I keep bringing Tasha? Well, her case was, that was, well, it wasn't tough for you because you didn't snitch. She did. But see the mastermind. That's another story. Which case do you think will be the hardest to do? The Tejada or the St. Patrick? You taking Monet's case or you got to do Tariq's case? Which one do you think will be the less stressful? Because if he's talking to Tariq about starting a war and Monet just told on the crew, plus Monet killed Mecca, Davis didn't need Mecca to be dead. They weren't going to do nothing to Davis. Now, Davis is drawn into this shit, but once he sold that ring, it was up. Oh, now you a part of it.
I'm I'm taking the Tariq case. I'm gonna take the Tariq case. Just like y'all said, Davis, he know that Tariq's money gonna come through. The Tahada is a little bit shaky. Tahada, you might not, you might not see your money. No, 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 no. You might not see your money. When your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen. You need to do exactly as I say. It's unethical. I love working with you three. As you always clear. What y'all think this is right here, man? Tariq's money does clear. I give him that. Uh, Renee, my question was, which case do you think was going to be the most stressful, like, <laughs> that you wouldn't want to take? I know they ain't got my dog crying, man. I know they ain't got Theo in there and they whooping on him. Come on, man. Treat Theo better, y'all. Treat Theo better. <laughs> Damn to hotters, man. But that man, you just never know what the Tahadas. Because once Kane hopped in the car, that's when I knew Davis. I like damn Davis is legit. Because he wasn't scared. He's like, man, you and your mama better have my money. So he didn't really care about it. What does Rick even have going on right now that he needs a lawyer? What was the last thing that Tariq did? Or he might just be talking to Davis for some advice. Because I don't think he have any cases or anything, does he? After he beat the trial, he's just chilling, ain't he? I know they're getting watched, but... Hmm. See, that's the thing about Davis, man. I'm really trying to think, all right. How far are they going to go with his character? Is he about to get back in these streets and do what needs to be done? Is he going to stay clean? Because it looks like he's living on the edge at this point. The way he's feeling about Theo, he got Tejada, St. Patrick, he got Sachs. Come on, man. Whitman on the case. It looking like Davis might take the suit off and just go out, you know what I'm saying, in some Tims and get to work. It looks like Davis is getting pushed to the limit, man. I can't take this no more. I can't take this no more. Kasim, I don't know where the cliff from. It just fell on my lap today, brother. But if you got a Facebook, you'll see these ads on there. Every now and then, they'll slip one or two out there. I love working with you, Tariq. Cash always clears. Cash always clear, but Tariq is laying low right now. But what is he like? All right, hold on. Let me see if I can. We got Davis upset. We got Tariq pulling up with the ski mask on.
So what y'all thinking? Tariq may have went out and did some dumb shit, and then we got the scene where Davis is talking to him like, hey, man, are you about to start a war, man? What the fuck are you doing? Uh, thanks, Kasim. Yeah, you know. Davis told us to clean up a little bit today. He said, be professional on this Tuesday. I said, all right, I got you, man. I'll do a little something. Davis is upset. He tearing shit up. So that means, uh, what? Y'all think when he tore up the room, that was from Dio dying? Like, or the information, like, man, you can't get Theo out, man. Nah, man, we ain't going to allow that. Hmm. I do want to know why Davis is upset. Now, I, I've been mad before, but I ain't, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't tearing up my own shit. <laughs> I ain't tearing up on shit. I ain't knocking nothing over that I know I got to pick, but I ain't that angry. I might slam a dough or something. But I barely do that because I ain't, I just ain't about to do it. It's like, dang, they didn't got me again. Neil said, I think Sachs double crossed Davis. Well, when he got mad or just in general, like for <laughs> like episode four, he just like, hey man, fuck you and tell Jenny or something. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think Sax is going to try to get his brother out. Or maybe, like you said, Sax double cross him and don't get his brother out. That would be a good exit plan if Tariq turned on, on the Tejadas with Davis. <laughs> But they ain't going to do nothing. Hold on. Yeah, because never mind. Tariq was there with Jabari. They know Tariq did the Russian. Yeah, that's a hot family. You really can't trust them to get on the stand and hold it down. They might tell on you. They know might. They will tell on you. Damn Tejadas. This look like the Rico dropping off. Let me see. The closest to getting caught. Somebody gave us some information about a drop. I know in the trailer we heard Blanca doing some talking. Look, let me see. I can't tell who this is. I can't tell this is like a white person. Hispanic. I don't know. I can't tell, but we know the laws is out. The laws is out. It seems like it's about to ramp up, and we're going to get us a lot of action, not just like the little Tariq running up and shooting one person. It seems like they about to give us some interesting scenes, hopefully, man. Like, we need to see some chases or something. All this being on Wall Street is cool. Getting someone fired for a tiki torch is all right. Cool. <laughs> Nigga, let's get into some action. Let's get into some action. We got the feds out. The police is out. Cool. Let's see some shootouts or something. We're going into episode four. Listen, the app and shit's cool. Selling on the roof is cool. We need some action. We need Davis to get this thing cracking. So that's why I'm glad Davis is saying if your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen to him. Tariq St. Patrick don't listen to nobody. Tariq St. Patrick is going to do the opposite of what you tell him. Jojo said, I need to see like five plus bodies. Now, I wasn't talking that many bodies. Five plus bodies in the episode, that's a lot to be episode four. Now, we were going into like nine, ten. All right, cool. Four or five. Damn. 
We should get like at least one or two. Because we got one last week. Was it just one? Just the Russian? They probably won't give us no kills. They probably won't give us no kills. Be nice, though. Must be nice. <laughs> Kendall said, I can't just have cops dropping, bodies dropping. Man, why not? Why not? We got eight dead teachers, 14 currently enrolled students, two pending, all dead at Stansfield. What do you mean we can't have bodies everywhere? We had the biggest snitch dead. We had 19 niggas dying of hanger. All this happened in three months. <laughs> got a random Russian out here. What do you mean we can't have bodies, man? We can have some bodies. That's one thing about power. We know that bodies will drop. We got a lot of bodies in New York City. Stansfield has the most murder slash deaths per capita per college. Like in America, in the world. Like what? Two teachers, three kids, some random nigga in the swimming pool. He didn't even go to school here. There's a lot of shit that goes on at Stansfield. We got a lot of bodies at Stansfield. We can have bodies all throughout the city fucking around with Tariq. <laughs> yeah, bars is in the water, sleeping. <laughs> Stansfield is a death trap. Proceed with caution. Make sure you have Davis on standby if you send your kids to Stansfield. Now, what you think he's talking about right here? Hold on. You say, man, it's ethical. Well, it's unethical, but it's legal. Yes, I say it's unethical. We must fuck. He helping out Monet, Tariq, or telling Sachs this is what you need to do. Yeah, the first three episodes, we got a body every episode. Sometimes it be like that. <laughs> Sometimes it be like that. Because we had the GTG, we got Bash, and uh, damn, what's the old boy's name? I ain't gonna lie to you, I just drew a blank. Oh, the Russian. Yeah, the GTG member, Bash, and the Russian. <laughs> oh, yeah, the couple in episode one. Noma did that in the opening scene. Damn. See, look at that. That's four. Is that the only ones we got? The couple, Bash. GTG, the Russian. So that's five and three episodes. All right. See? We right on track. We right, on, we, we right where we need to be. All right. I, I'll scale it back. If we don't get one, all right, cool. We do one. We do one. You know what I mean? Braden, well, we're gonna get it because Braden owe two bodies. 
Braden know two bodies. So any episode we want, this is going to be a user-friendly episode. Any episode you want, you just pick up your remote and you just type in 187 and Braden got to go kill somebody. Oh, yeah, it was it was two people. It was, yeah, it was two people in there with guap. So that puts us at damn two, five, seven. Damn. Oh, seven, eight. Yeah, Renee, you right. We got uh Nick. That's eight. Damn. So we got eight bodies in three episodes. All right, power. All right. I respect it. I respect it. Mm hmm. I respect it. That's what I was saying. I was like, power, man, we need some bodies, but my bad. We got eight. We got eight. No, no, we might have to. Do the couple. Two couple bash. Oh, the two GTG. One GTG. Oh man, you can't. Well, this ain't word. Never mind. It was three T uh, GTG in the house. I mean, in the crib. Because I just got him by himself. Because he was a he was a murder by himself. Bash Nick Russian. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we got eight so far. Eight and three episodes. We good. We good. Right on track. Yeah, RC, uh, that's Nick. That's Drew's kill. Don't forget the shorty Noma off. The, yeah, that's this uh, in front of the Three Stooges. Hold on, wait. They killed someone in front of the Three Stooges? Thanks, Alma. The old guard. I mean, y'all got to remind me. Oh, y'all talking about, uh, what's her name, Roxy? Or something like that? I know y'all talking about she was the girl that was in there. Yeah, her name was like Rocky or something like that. Yeah, Rocky. Damn. R.I.P. to her, too. I liked her, too. I had just got her email last week. I had got her email the week before she came up dead. I had her fucking email. Then I did forget about her. All right, so two, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we got nine bodies in three episodes. So we're averaging three an episode. I bet I might go ahead and keep this. I'm going to call this the body counter. Do I want to save? Put this over here. You don't need to see what's on my desktop. <laughs> Mr. 
body snatcher. That's what we're going to call it, the body snatcher list. All right, we got the body snatcher list going up. I'm, you know, I'm gonna put give me a minute by Friday or maybe my like Sunday. I'm gonna try to come up with like a graphic or something for that. We're gonna go ahead and keep track of it because right now we had a three episodes, three an episode, three an episode. So episode four, we expecting at least two, one or two, and then next week they're gonna pick up on the back end with like four. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I would count the the pilot because what I was thinking was he let them go because it wouldn't be no reason to kill them. That's just more bodies like he got the information and they wasn't going to say nothing. Did he kill him? Matter of fact, hold on, let me go back. I think I got the picture. I don't know. Did he pull out a gun? Yeah, I was thinking. Drew beat up Kane. Oh, with the pilot. Yeah, see, when he did the knife, I thought that was him cutting them loose. But I don't, I don't think he killed him. I think he just cut them loose. He burned them to get their answers. Now, I told you already, as soon as I seen the pilot getting burnt, if this nigga don't care about the pilot, I know he don't care about the motherfucking security. I would have told him so quick. It was a Range Rover. Tell light out. License plate is New York. It was a yellow plate. It expires in 2022. 607-YCFO. Hell yeah, I seen him burning that nigga hand. That nigga about to burn my ear. Nigga, please. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll tell you what you need to know. I'm over here dodging that motherfucking flame. Whoa, 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 nigga. Hey, man. It was in the range over. Tail light was out. Nigga, cut that flame out. Nigga, that shit hot. <laughs> he killed him with the knife. I don't know, man. We're going to leave that up. We'll put that as a maybe. We'll put that as a maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that on there as a maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll just drop those two cane, uh, cane maybes. Well, Lorenzo say no loose ends. Yeah, it wasn't no loose ends for him except for Kane. Kane, the last loose end. <laughs> Kane, the last loose end. I don't know, man. You know, <laughs> shit. Whatever y'all need to know, just get that fire off my ass, nigga. Hey, yo, whoa, 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 whoa! It was a ball head guy, man. God damn. Man, I'm Odi J. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, support the channel. Cash apps at the bottom of the screen. We're gonna talk a little bit about Tate, and then we're gonna go into some free time. I'm not about to pull no four, five hour tonight. We might get a three, we might get a three. Do a little bit of free time. But Rashad Tate, former police officer, always, always a ladies' lover. Mm-hmm. Always a ladies' man. Mm-hmm. Always a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Always in some shit. Mm-hmm. 
But that's what we like about Rashad Tate. Not afraid to get his hands dirty. Rashad Tate is the type of man that you look up and you aspire to be like him. When I see Rashad Tate every day, I say, man, if he can make it, I can make it. I wipe tears away from my eyes when I'm watching Rashad Tate. I say, if he could make it, I could make it. He was a little black boy like I was. If he could make it, I could make it. And on the way up there, I might encounter some beautiful women. Maybe not. But if Tate can do it, we can do it. See, we heard about Davis. Davis had a troubled past. Davis was a gangbanger. Davis was a drug dealer. Davis was a killer. Well, see, the thing about Tate, he was once, oh, dog, he was a killer. He was a stiller. Now look at him. He became a police officer to better the community. Once he cleaned that up, he said, I got to do more than this. He ran for councilman, meaning he's holding it down in the city. He said, you know what? This ain't it. This ain't big enough for me. This ain't this ain't doing enough. I need to be more than just my city. He said, you know what? Governor, that's what I'm going to do. You're damn right. I'm going to take care of the state of New York. He lost that. He didn't give up, though. He was down and out. There was a moment where he couldn't see no future. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go. He was living in his brother's basement, hurting, because all the work that he's been doing, he may have thought he was failing, but he doesn't know that these were just speed bumps in life. You're going to go through this. He got up one day, went to Stern. Stern offered him a position at Stansfield that he couldn't turn down. So not only was he getting work, Stern knew that he liked beautiful women. So he said, oh, there's some eye candy up there, too. Now, it was a rocky road for Tate because people didn't welcome him and embrace him like he was one of them. Well, that's because he wasn't. See, he was former law enforcement. So he knew a thing or two about what's going on in these streets. Now, after a little bit of blackmailing, we find out that Tate is now running for congressman. So I don't want just the state. I want to go on down there to Capitol Hill. I want my influence to be over the nation, not just the state, not just the city, mm -mm. the nation. Now, on the way up, we got Blanca and Jenny trying to stop this black man from climbing the ladder, the social ladder, the economic ladder, the professional ladder to the very, very top. And trying to thrive in politics. They trying to bring this man down. And we ain't seen Tate hurt not one person. Tate ain't did nothing but show up to work every day. Cleaner than a whistle. Tate ain't did nothing but help young Tariq get a room. When the school turned their back on Tariq, Tate was there. Tate was there. Mm -hmm. When Tariq went to court because Stansfield was trying to bust him over the head with some drug charge. He said, no, not the treat. I know. When people were in Truth Nightclub getting robbed, who stepped up? It wasn't you. It wasn't me for sure. Nigga had a shotgun. I ain't no hero. You said you need to watch? You want the bow tie too? Now, I ain't gonna give up my cell phone. I got I got the remote to the, the fan. I got a I got a fan at the crib. I can go back and get it and bring back up here. I can go get it and bring it up. If you just let me leave, like if you hold on to the remote, I'm gonna go get the fan and be back. Oh yeah. Who saved them? Rashad Tate did. So when we look at Rashad Tate, we gotta understand he knows the streets better than we do. knows the streets better than we do and we got hating ass Blanca and Jenny two thirds of the justice friends trying to connect him to Tariq and Braden when we already know that Braden admitted guilt to being the kingpin of Stansfield Tariq was found not guilty so you never found innocent you just found not guilty uh, I'll look up Tate in a minute
Tate also has connections. Tate, he's been knowing Tariq since Tariq was knee high. <laughs> now they trying to say that Tariq and them are drug dealers. And it isn't a good look for Tate to be running for Congress, hanging around drug dealers. But one was found not guilty. The other one admitted to it, and y'all didn't arrest him, so it ain't really that bad. Kasim said, I can't imagine a Tate and Whitman convo. I think Tate would get him. I don't think Tate going to fumble. I think the way Tate's thought process is, before he says the wrong thing, He'll end the conversation. He'll talk to you, but right before he gets ready to tell you like where he messed up, he seemed like the type, like, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and end this. We're gonna go ahead and end this conversation here. If you, you don't have nothing on me, officer, I'm out of here. I think where Tate is compared to how Davis got his brother issue going on, I think Tate is ahead of Davis as far as like staying on track and not getting caught up in no bullshit even though he's going to be in some bullshit because it's Tate and he likes to put himself in the bullshit. That's the difference between him and Kamal. Tate, he likes to put himself in the bullshit. Kamal's like, nah, man, let's do this shit. Not Rashad. Rashad different. Oh, I ain't got the clip on standby. I just know it was in the club. Yeah, I ain't got the clip on standby. I don't be that equipped. Like, I didn't even think we was going to be talking about that body. I thought we were coming on here to show support to Rashad Tate running for Congress, supporting a black man and giving him our vote. I thought that's what we came on here to do. Y'all talking about a body. I don't remember nobody. Now, now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, yeah, I do remember that body. He was saving the future. Lieutenant Governor. He ain't want to do what he had to do with y'all. What would you do if your back was against the wall? You already heard me. I'm turning over the watch. I'm putting the watch in the bag. But the thing about me, I'm quick with it. You know what I'm saying? Because I seen old boy put a rolly in there. So when the bag come around to me, I'm dropping mine in there, but pulling the rolly out. <laughs> you see that switch right there? Yeah, they were like, damn, what you just do? I was putting my watch in there. I was making sure that it was, you know what I'm saying, it didn't overflow. So that's why I used two hands. I done pulled me out of rolling in that motherfucker. So I'm leaving with a rolling. I put a $200 watch in there and came out with a $25,000 rolling. Yeah, you know how I do. But thanks, Tate, for that. I know we spoke on Tate and Bennett one time. Y'all think she's here for her own po uh, personal game? Because you know she's a suspect. Everybody is suspect until we move them. Sacks, what about the Tejadas? Damn, what's he at in the regular power? Rashad Tate. Spin off book two goals. Now I don't see Tate on. I gotta look him up then. So Tate was born in 85. Okay, me and Tate the same age. All right, shout out to my brother. My brother, my brother. So Tate is five years younger than Ghost, three years younger than Davis, one year younger than Tasha. Wait, 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 wait. Davis McLean. Monet. When was Monet born? So Monet and Davis are the same age, and they're two years younger than Ghost. Yeah. 
All right. So how old is Lorenzo? Man, they know I can't read no Spanish. Why would they even put that on here? Lorenzo, when was he born? Lorenzo was born in 72. So this nigga eight years older than uh, Ghost. Damn, I ain't know Lorenzo was in 72. So he's 10 years older than Monet. Interesting. So when was Mecca born? Mega is the same age as Monet. All right. Man, Lorenzo too old to be acting like. I thought Lorenzo was maybe like three, four years older than Monet. Man, this nigga 10 years older acting like this. Man, that's what they say. I don't know how accurate this stuff is, is but for the most part, it's pretty close. So we, I, guess, I guess we could say he's 10 years older than her. I don't remember them saying that they were that far apart. So Mecca had one, two, three, five bodies. Right, let me see what else they got on tape. We're going to see if there's any information we ain't know about him because I did not know Davis was a gangbanger. Supporting cash returns. This is goals. We don't want the goals. I mean, they're giving us all the seasons back in when he started on here, season four. Yeah, this is what we want. We want the Power Book 2 ghost stuff. All right, murders connected to uh, Rashad. Damn, where the hell? So there y'all go. Alphonse Clemens shot in the chest for a robbery. Murders connected to Rashad. Crope. Carter. James. Well, he ain't really had nothing to do with that. Andre Coleman. Shot to death by Tommy Rashad hired Crowe and his son the Carter to kill ghosts, but they failed. That was the worst shit ever. Hey, when they had that little shootout, man, I'm telling you, they didn't stand a chance, man. <laughs> they didn't stand a chance. That just the entertainer was in there, man. He came around the corner, got popped, and that was it. I mean, what y'all doing? Pop, pop. Shad Tay hired these fools. Oh, I don't remember this one, Carter. Let me see. Then they ain't got the face of Carter on here. Carter's a young gangster assassin. He works closely with his father. I mean, I remember it, but I want to see. Oh, I didn't know his name was Carter. They oh, okay, that's him. They should just put them two uh, murders together, man. We need those separated. <laughs> they could have just said uh, Croup and Carter together. <laughs> Shame St. Patrick. No, I remember Andre Coleman, though. Good old Dre. Let me see him. Let's see if there's any uh any history on him from when he was younger. So it's saying that it's implied that Rashad had many people killed by croup or crop, however, croup while serving as a cop. So Tate was putting hits out allegedly. 
Uh, it's implied that Rashad may have had many people killed. Uh oh, I told y'all this old dog. It's never revealed how or when he discovered James alias as ghost. It's also unknown why he chose not to reveal it after the later's nomination. Mm -hmm. He attempted to warn James about the hit on him. He loved his family, determined to pack them for the car to appear. So I enjoyed that. Oh, okay, well, it just sounds like Rashad Tate was just doing what any other officer's been doing. <laughs> Getting it in. Sound like they wilding out. Rashad Tate had them running through the city, didn't he? What up it is, what it is. What y'all think? Y'all think when, uh, Rashad was really out there doing it? Because this is all alleged right there. They're saying it's implied. I mean, we knew that Tate had a troubled background. But it just seems like, nigga, the only way you can make it in power, you got to be crooked. You got to do some dirt. If you want to make it in power, you have to have dirt on your name. RSJ and Yaz are the only two that we know as of right now with no dirt on their names. Last time that I checked, it was no smut on my rap. Yeah, that's how they feeling right now. RSJ and Yaz the Rock. They saying Rashad was putting hits on niggas while he was a cop. Allegedly. Allegedly. I cannot confirm or deny, but allegedly. Would y'all... Would y'all be able to believe that Tate was really out here? Because, I mean, he he must have believed in them to call them to get that ghost in Tommy. You know what I mean? Because they said, I mean, we always knew that he knew who Ghost was because he was always talking slick to James. But for him to send some people after him, he knew how bad James and Tommy were in the street. So he must have really trusted them. Damn, Croup. You didn't got pop, man. You wasn't who you said you was. You were two years past retirement. When Rashad left the police force, you should have left the streets, man. Santa Claus goes straight to the ghetto. JoJo said, Tay's a politician. Ghost was on the... Well, you right. Ghost was he he got elected. They were they were doing it. They made it. We made it. We made it. And James was the first time we seen James on screen, he was catching a body. A body. And this nigga made it all the way up there. So I know Rashad was putting hits on fools back then. Mm-hmm. You right about that, man. And hell, look at look at Davis. Davis did all that shit in the street. He caught a body. He was a drug dealer. He was a gangbanger. He made it. He a lawyer. He topped off. Making three million a year. 500,000 out of nowhere. He just wake up. I want 500,000. Get it to me. Like, damn, Davis. Man, can you cut me some slack? Like, man, 200? Because last time I was up there, man, y'all wasn't really doing no work in there, man. It's just you and Sachs, and then you got a couple of people walking around. But, man, no, nah, man, 500? Come on, Davis. Come on, Davis. All right, man. Rashad Tate, cool guy, man. Seems pretty stand up to me. How do you all think it's gonna play out with him and Bennett? How is this school situation like? Is he gonna finally make it? 
He's going to be legit. Like, all right, bet. We're done with Tate. Tate made it. Or is Bennett just about to use him? Get what she want out of the man and leave him. Do him wrong. Like, do dirty. Like, do dirty. <laughs> Don't do me now. Do dirty. I ain't trying to go out like Willie Lump Lump. I mean, who's Willie Lump Lump? I don't know. I mean, it's inside though, you know. Oh, yeah, Kendall, we do need that paperwork. That's what they be saying. And we need that paperwork, man. We don't see no paperwork. Like, damn. We ain't see no paperwork. We ain't see no paperwork. We ain't seen no birth certificate saying that Tariq is James St. Patrick's. But y'all say that that's his son. You see? When you say stuff like that, we how did you trying to go? How did you trying to go? We ain't seen no paperwork showing that James St. Patrick and Tasha was married. So him messing with Angela, allegedly he was married. We ain't seen no paperwork. We ain't seen no paperwork. Mm-mm. We ain't seen no paperwork. Mm-mm. We ain't seen no paperwork. None. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. We seen Tariq shoot a Russian, but can we really count that as a body? We didn't see no death certificate. I didn't see no paperwork saying that he was dead. Did y'all? Did anybody? Did anybody see any paperwork last episode? Russian dead, found dead. Just real quick, I just, I just want to know so I can go back and like get a screenshot. I want to read the paperwork, see what it say, see if it say Tariq St. Patrick did it. <laughs> we ain't see no paperwork alright man calm down calm down nigga it's a TV show they ain't about to show us paperwork on everything <laughs> alright All right, brother I, I got you I, I, I feel you I want to like Bennett's character because she's holding it down in the classroom. Ain't nothing better than the education. But one thing we know about the teachers at the Stansfield campus, you can't trust them. Suspect. Suspect. S-U-S. Sus. Suspect. Suspect. Sus. One reason I'm going to tell y'all she a suspect because we ain't heard her issue no homework. They done been in class three times. They ain't got no homework. They just all sit in there and they talk. Human capital. Need versus greed. I like this class. You pick 25 people and we ain't got no homework to do? Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> Sign me up next year. Next year, I'm putting, all, I'm putting my name in the pot like four or five times. The hell with that. The hell with that. I'm trying to get in this damn class. American Psyche. No homework. And we got hand selected. Oh, this is, this is easy. Mo, that's two for two. So what's Harper done? Shit, I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but it's a little suspect that you picked out of 300 students, 25 of them, and ain't issued no homework. I ain't never had one college course in my life where there was no homework. There ain't been no reading. There ain't been no nothing. It's just, hey, real quick, they got books for what? They ain't even talking about nothing in the class. They come in, open discussion. They go in the hall and sell drugs. There's something suspect about that. I know Stansville ain't paying her to have a, a lecture every class and not issue out no homework. We just seen on Bel Air, Miss Hughes get fired for changing the curriculum. Uh, you got one more episode, Miss Bennett, before I start contacting the dean and letting the dean know you altering some shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know why I'm gonna do that? Because I told you I'm that janitor, and Salim don't hire 
none of the brothers for the damn stallion shop. He always telling the girls. So if I can't get in that class and I see Salim is hating too, I'm hating on everybody. Let's do it. I'm going down there with my mop bucket. Then I'm like, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> Jonathan 207, uh, I need the dean down here right now. Uh, I need to have an open discussion with you and one of the professors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got one more class with no homework, man. And I'm calling her out. At least Carrie and them were telling them to like write articles and shit. At least Carrie and Jabari were like, hey, if y'all do this award, you could like if you do good in the class, the top grade, you know what I mean? They in this American psyche just sitting there getting psyched out. I'd be sleepy as hell in that class. Mo, huh? Huh? Human capital. Um, DC is the capital of the United States, and there's humans that work there. Like, damn, all right, Mo, that was good. I like that. I like that answer. Human capital. Humans at the capital. All right, good one. <laughs> I'm going to let you slide this time. All right, thank you. You know what I'm saying? But something's up, man, because she threw herself in front of Tate. So I don't know if I can trust her, man. I don't know if I can trust her because y'all think that was stage? <clears throat> y'all think this was stage for our boy Tate? Like she knew because she asked around about him. And you know what? It's starting to make sense now. They said Tate was wilding out. They said when Tate was a police officer, he was ordering shots, ordering his, ordering get them off the block. Hear me out. Just hear me out. Bennett is here from the description we've seen. She's trying to get him to like straighten up and fly right. You know what I mean? Take this political shit serious. Now, whatever happened in college, he may have been wilding out before he became a cop. He may have been in college acting a goddamn fool. Come on, y'all. This is Tate. This is Rashad Tate. He acting a fool as an adult. I can only imagine how he was in college before he became a cop and allegedly was putting hits on niggas in the streets because we know he put a hit on James and Tommy. How crazy do y'all think Tate was back in college? Whatever was going on between them two, she knew this nigga was a wild boy and she back for more. She want to change him now. She been waiting on this since college. See, in college, you couldn't control Tate. But see, Tate need that help right now because he trying to run for Congress. Yeah. She trying to change my boy. My boy was wild in college. Yeah, y'all know it. Lope dog. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, old dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a segment. If you've been following my YouTube for like the last two years, I had a segment last year called Movie Connection. Called Movie Connection, where I take a character from one show and then relate them to all the other shows they do. I might bring it back and just do it on a live. Once a week, we'll pick a character and jump through their movies and try to connect their storyline. Would y'all be up for that? The movie connection. It could be movies, uh, yeah, movies. It could be TV shows. We'll just test y'all knowledge. Ken, I mean, I was I was making videos of it. I wasn't really going live, so I stopped. Cause I think the first person I did was Lawrence Fishburne. I linked him in school, yeah, because it was you know. G5G, that's what we want to be. G5G. All right, we'll pick a night. We'll pick a night. I'm going to put a poll up, and I'm going to have a couple of characters. Uh, what we got? Well, tomorrow we're going to be busy. Thursday, Friday. Hold on, wait. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I'm going to be on Brillo's channel. 
I'm gonna put up a I'm gonna put up a community tab, and we're gonna grab some movies. I'm gonna pick four different characters or four different actors, and we're gonna try to find a couple of movies. I'm gonna try to link a storyline for y'all. So I'm gonna put up a poll. Who would y'all want to start with? Like, who's a character you could think about? Cause like you seen with Tate, we got Tate going back to old dog. He was wilding out in college. Tate got any college movies? But we got uh, Love Jones. Nah, any actor, man. Look, if I could, I would. I'd still be having to be Tuesday and to be Thursday. But I don't know what got my channel hit. If it was because I wasn't getting no copyright strikes off of watching Tubi. I, it may have been, I don't know, man. I don't know what it was. I just, I don't know. I ain't trying to risk it, but shit. You know me, man. I, if you make a film or something, I'm going I'm to watch it. Let me see what it look like. What, what are we hitting on? If it's trash, it's trash. But like I said, but I'll never knock nobody. If you getting less than like a four or five, not, not a five. If you get less than a four rating from me, that means you didn't try. You didn't try. I'm going to give you credit. Like, all right, hey. First of all, I can't rate you nothing less than a four because at least you put together a movie. I can talk and, you know what I'm saying, come up with one, but I ain't shot no movie. So I can't give you less than a four unless you just got on there and was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. Nah, Jeremiah, we got to, I need more time to do Denzel. Denzel got a lot of movies. So you got to give me, I won't say like, B or C because I still got Lorenz Tate as a good ass actor in my book but you gotta give me somebody like that Denzel got too many movies you know what I mean I mean Tate he does too but we got a lot of like when you think Denzel man you got like fucking 50 eras <laughs> you got all kinds of Denzels Hey, Tate, excuse me, he killed him over them two cheeseburgers, and then he picked them up like, hey, y'all want these burgers? Y'all want these burgers? What up? Just call me EJ. Hey, Omar Epps would be a good one. Jeremiah, I was thinking about Martin, but Martin, like, You got bad boys, big mama house, those linked together because of the police. Then you got the Knights movie. I mean, Martin got a lot of movies too. Omar Epps, Forrest Whitaker. I be getting Forrest Whitaker and his brother mixed up, man. I ain't know it was three of them. But let me let me just finish this with with Tate and then we'll we'll talk about that. We'll do a little free time, man. I'm Mo J. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Definitely hit that like button. Support the channel. Cash apps at the bottom of the screen. Tate Davis, two bad brothers. I mean, bad in a good way. Both had a troubled past. Both got bodies. Both. Got the best tailor in New York City. Where they in? Manhattan, Brooklyn, where they at? Wherever they at, I'm trying to go where they at. Two brothers connected to the underworld, trying to survive in the upper world. The police is hating because when you really break it down, two-thirds of the Justice League are on Tate's ass. One-third of the Justice League is on motherfucking Davis's ass. But with our powers combined, we got the DEA Rico. This is just a lot of shit going on, man. It's just a lot of shit going on, man. Sometimes I look and say, man, it's a good thing I ain't a lawyer because I can see me caught up in this nonsense. Y'all be reading newspaper articles on me. Bo going down. Mo was in the conspiracy. Mo made nineteen million dollars on the low. Damn. 
I was a good lawyer too, but in the end, you can't win. Hopefully these two gentlemen, they make it up out of this because we don't want to see them going into the underworld again. You know what I mean? We don't want them going back into the underworld. We want to see both of them do good things. We want to see Tate make Congress. We want to see Davis become a judge, you know? That's what I want to see. I want to see Davis become a judge. That's what I'm thinking he could do, man. He's He's got the qualifications. He's got the integrity. Yeah. Plus, he has the connections. And with Tate making Congress, we can get that push. Hey, man, Davis McLean out of New York City. Yeah, let's try to make him a Supreme Judge. You know what I'm saying? Supreme Court Judge. Let's just, let's just hear it out. Let's just hear it out. I'm going to talk to the people back in New York. We're going to get him as a judge. He's going to be a standing judge right now. I mean, a sitting judge right now. And we're going to try to bring him on up. So y'all don't think Davis could be a judge? Well, we, we, we draw on the line just a lawyer. Y'all don't want Davis as a judge. I'm thinking Davis has the integrity. I'm thinking if I went up there, judge. We ain't killed nobody. It was Spanky's booze. What's the worst he can do? <laughs> What's the worst he can do? Because the thing about Davis, all you got to do is tell your lawyer, uh, Your Honor, can we meet you in your chambers? You go back there, you tell Your Honor, look, man, I got $500,000. <laughs> Davis is taking that fine. Well, he probably charging a meal. As a judge, I can see Davis charging a meal. Davis beat more cases than Proctor. Uh, nah, because, well, uh, I don't know, man. Because, you know, with Proctor, he was James's lawyer for a while. I mean, of course, unless we just talking about throughout the seasons, I'm trying to think. Proctor wasn't really going to too many trials. Proctor was handling stuff out of the court, but, you know, when James went in, went, went to jail. Once another time they was in court. See, Proctor was dealing with a lot of shit behind the scenes. You remember, he had the fouls and everything. I don't know. That's a good question. I might have to go back and watch and see how many trials Proctor went through. Yeah, EJ, that's what I'm saying. When, when Proctor was on the screen, it was just telling James, hey, watch your back, stop doing stupid shit, or the few times that they were in, in, in the trial. Of course, when Tommy got rid of him, RIP. Hey, man, we not seeing Eli uh, Eliza Marie or whatever the fuck her name was until Power Book 5, Tasha, son. Her and Yaz the Rock going to be working together. So are they really dirty? Are they really dirty lawyers or are they doing what lawyers are supposed to do? Paid liars. Eliza Marie, Yaz the Rock, starring in Mastermind, Tasha Sun. Yeah, there we go. Master Montasha son, Yaz the Rock and Eliza Marie. We just call her M for short. Yeah, with with Davis as a judge, all you gotta do is have that money. You got that money. You heard what he told Tariq St. Patrick. I love doing business with you, kid. <laughs> Money always clears. But there you go, man. I ain't really have much, you know what I'm saying? Just wanted to hop on here and talk about the gentlemen in suits. Because we did talk about the authority figures. We talk about the youngsters running them up through New York City. From your barrel to the next. The Tejada boys. The St. Patrick kid. 
be on the lookout because these niggas is reckless. They are reckless. Now, I will say this. I will say this. They aren't hurting anybody innocent. They aren't. All right. Tariq killed Bash. That was a little too far, but he did it. <laughs> he did it. Everybody else, well, the couple didn't. Well, that's different. Noma, Noma ain't a part of the kids. Noma is her own entity. We don't know what the hell she is. She didn't took a vacation. That's how you know you the boss. When you can pull up, hire some niggas, and leave. Don't even tell them what they need to do. Just y'all selling dope and leave. Noma said, nigga, I'm going to France. Noma ain't worried about them. They're going to get it right or niggas going to start dying. Now, I'm just saying the reason I'm saying Badge didn't have to die, of course, he's a rat, but he ain't like kill nobody. Bash was talking slick, but he ain't like when you really think about it, Bash ain't killed nobody. And he didn't know that Tariq was using his shit to motherfucking do some goddamn illegal shit. You know what I mean? So that's why when I say Bash is probably like the only one that they killed that didn't really need to be killed. Like, just pay this nigga off. But guess what? Just hear me out. Just hear me out. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me just double check some real quick. Let me just double check something real quick. Uh, let me just check. Let me just check. Just give me one. Just one. Come on, come on, come on. Bear with me. Come on, come on. I know what I'm looking for, but I can't find it. Green man. Is it episode two? If it would work, recap. Uh, well, I, I ain't, I can't find it. But listen, Bash had them on a the schedule, right? Bash had them on a the schedule. All they had to do was pay them. Follow where I'm going. If Tariq wouldn't have killed Bash, they could have paid Bash off. All the money that Effie is making on the side could have been the money to pay off Bash. But instead, they killed Bash when they could have paid Bash. But then when you look at the future, they wouldn't be able to pay Bash because Effie was taking half. It ain't had, but it just sounded good. <laughs> they would have been all right with not killing Bash. They just got no money. They just, hey, instead of buying the Rollies and shit, hey, pay this nigga off and be done with it. But, hey. I can see that, too. Bash definitely wasn't going to stop, especially since him and Stern were done. I'm just glad Monet's talking, not to the police, but just talking, you know, seeing her down and now she was still mourning Zeke and I just didn't feel right. Just looking, I'm kind of upset, you know. <laughs> they taking people out for less well as of right now everybody's legit now the couple they were innocent the couple didn't have anything to do with dying this season but Noma like we said she her own person the, the GTGs they die for no reason. 
if we just being honest, the GTGs die for no reason, especially the two that got shot in the damn warehouse. Like, man, if you just wanted him, just take him. What you shooting me for? Oh, I ain't did nothing to nobody. <laughs> I ain't hurt nobody. I ain't give up no information. What y'all shooting me for? What do you say on Boys in the Hood? What you hit me for? A little Chris talking about, yeah, man, what she hit you for? Just shut up. I'm like, damn. <laughs> But yeah, man, Davis, Tate, Underworld. Is Angela coming back anymore, y'all? Are we done? Are we done with her? No need to see her. Exactly, Kendall. We can't even presume that they did. <laughs> we can't even presume that they did. We ain't see no, no death certificate, no nothing. We ain't see no funeral. <laughs> We ain't see no funeral. Yeah, who knows? But on my channel, we can. We can assume whatever the hell we want over here. We can assume whatever we want over here. If y'all want to be correct, go down to your local library and open up an encyclopedia. But over here in the Moverse, what we say goes, and everybody is a suspect till we remove them from the board. We like to have a good time, joke about the show, make some shit up. Come on, man. It's a TV show. But you're right. We don't know what these white folk didn't did. All I know is they got this diamond ring that don't belong to them. For all I know, the Russian faked his death. Lauren did. Lauren did. Why can't the Russian fake his death? But nah, man, that was it, though. Rashad Tate, Davis McLean, two brothers. We did, uh, didn't we? Yeah, we did find out a little bit about the streets for both of them. We still got to find out what the hell is Bennett about to be doing. Now, Davis, we already know he's stuck in between a rock and a hard place, Tejada, St. Patrick, all that nonsense. Plus, he got motherfucking sacks working with the Justice League. Yep, Tommy faked his death too. Tasha St. Patrick faked hers. She the mastermind. I wonder, did Davis ever get the money? After they paid for it, like, where's the money at? I wonder if they ever going to say, oh, wait a minute, that might have been this. When your lawyer tells you not to start a war, you should listen. You need to do exactly as I say. Son. This might be the money right here. Oh, what if that is the money? The five million. He got it in cash. Well, after you know saying after the auction gets there, he probably got like four and a half. Probably got a whole five. Y'all you know, think this might be the money from the ring? Or is this Tariq and them getting money? Let's just say. Hear me out. This is just a scenario, you know, it just popped in my head. If you were Davis McLean, you got $5 million in cash. Tariq St. Patrick comes to you and says, hey, we need to have a million to give to Noma, the one I told you that was looking for the ring. We need a million to give to her. If you're Davis, 
are you giving Tariq a million dollars to give to Noma to get Noma to fuck up off their back to save you? I'm thinking the same thing. If if I know that Tariq needs a million dollars and Noma is looking around and shit, hey, here go a M. <laughs> she don't even need it. She got the ring back. I heard bird on the street. <laughs> she got the ring back. She don't even need me, but here go a M. Let her know, hey, it was all a misunderstanding. I don't know, Dante. Don't know how the ring got to me. I'm just a lawyer. I can't divulge that information. Yeah. Client confidentiality. I can't do it. I'm ethical over here. You know me. I follow the law to the T. Man, I'm giving Tariq that million so quick. I'm talking pop, pop, stack, 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 stack. Nigga, a million. Oh, yeah, Tariq, take this. Get this shit. Get over there right now. Where's she at? I'll drive you over there. Now, I'm going to park a half a block away so she don't see me, but I'm going to drive you over there because we need to make sure you get this millionaire. I don't need you making detours with Braden Weston. I don't need you getting around Kane. Kane ain't never seen a million dollars in cash. Hell no. And I definitely don't want you around no Tejadas with none of this money. And that girl, Effie, I can't trust her. She a suspect, I heard. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive you over there. And it looks, man, these are new bills, too, man. This ain't on the block bills. You know what I mean? This ain't little $20 bills that you found on the corner. Because think about it. If I got a ring, $5.5 million, that's, let's just say it was an even five. It's five million that I didn't have because Tariq gave me this ring. So even if I leave with four, that's still way more than a little 500,000 I'd be charging. Yeah, I might take that four million and try to figure out how to shake something. I'm about to say on oh, season two. No, 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 no. I'm gonna say ain't no way they already got no. I don't see nothing popping up. End up opportunity. What they got? What they talking about on here? Rotten tomatoes. Oh, there ain't nothing but the title for it. We already did that several times. Rico coming. Whitman ain't playing. Drew getting help. Will they succeed next time on Mastermind? What y'all got, man? We got a little free time now. Got a little free time for a little bit. What up, Eric? Oh, 
I want the characters, my bad. Now, I don't know about no movies that then came out. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was watching uh Hunger Games today. I was watching the second one. I ain't never seen Hunger Games before. It was on the part. They were like swimming in the water, getting like some bow and arrows. I'm like, man, what, what is this? I ain't never watched that shit. I might go back and start it from the beginning. I don't know what the hell it was. Mo, Miss Tahada, Negane, Drug Dealer 82. Who the hell was real? Oh, nigga got shot in the hallway. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I forgot all about this dude, Rail. Yeah, we we growing a little bit. We trying to get there. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We trying to hit forty thousand. We trying to hit forty thousand. Ain't asking too much. Who the hell was Shell? I mean, there's a lot of characters I don't remember. Oh, that was a girlfriend. Oh, the ex girl. All right, hey, I remember her. First scene, I don't came. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Tasha and popped up. I mean, not Tasha and Monet. I'll be getting Tasha and Monet mixed up, man. That damn mastermind. That damn mastermind show. We're going to have to get that shit together. <laughs> <laughs> see what other connections that rail had all right so there ain't nobody just came that's what i'm saying whenever i whenever i think about power i keep thinking tasha for some reason she's the fucking mastermind of the whole show I don't know. Oh, that's why it's called Ghost. James St. Patrick is the silhouette of Ghost. You can't see Tasha. She's the mastermind. Oh, that's why it's called Power Book 2 Ghost, Tasha's son. It makes sense. Jamie was just the spirit. You couldn't see Tasha because she's the mastermind. She's the real ghost. Someone get Courtney Kemp on the line right now. We didn't crack the code. You know who Breeze is? Tasha St. Patrick. She's ghost. She moves in the wind. One minute she's here. Next thing you know, she's gone. Whole new identity. Y'all write this down, y'all write this. Tasha St. Patrick. Oh no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, we're doing this live right now. Yeah, we're we're cracking the code, y'all. We are cracking the code. Hold on. Tariq St. Patrick, Eric Stark, aka Ghost, Tasha's son. Tasha's son is nickname is Ghost. She's the mastermind. Whoa, whoa, shit. Wait, 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 wait. Tasha St. Patrick. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Wait. Tasha St. Patrick. Wait, she has two aliases? Tasha Green, Vanessa. Who the fuck is Tasha Green and Vanessa Edwards? Wait. Is she the mastermind? Goodness, Tasha St. Patrick, aka Tasha Green, aka Vanessa Edwards, is ghost.
She's a criminal informant. She's a housewife, formerly. Owner of Tomorrow's Tots. Daycare. A drug dealer. A prisoner. Exonerate. Oh, my goodness. James was just the body. Tasha was ghost. When Tasha got done with the body and using James St. Patrick, she had him killed by her son and then she disappeared in the wind. Tasha St. Pat, T Tasha Green, Van Vanessa. This woman on your screen is ghost. She's the mastermind. Power Book 5. Tasha's son. The mastermind. We just did that live. I don't want to hear no one else say, oh, ghost is Daniel James. He ain't ghost. This is ghost. This is ghost. James St. Patrick, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. James St. Patrick, let's go. Come on. Look at these names that he got. Ghost, Jamie, Uncle G, Jimmy, Daddy, Phantasm. Like what? Nigga, this ain't no name that Ghost would have. This ain't no game. This ain't no cool name. This ain't no Ghost name over here. Daddy, Jimmy, Jamie. Hell no. Damn. Tasha St. Patrick, y'all. Tasha Green, Vanessa Edwards, whatever you want to call her. Whatever you want to call her. Damn. Because who? 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 Who's the one? Who's the one that said they wanted to be the biggest dope dealer in New York City? She was using him. He was a vessel. She's ghost. She consumes bodies. She manipulated Terry Silver. She used his body. She manipulated Sean. She used his body. She's ghost. She wanted to kill Jamie to escape that body. She used her son to kill Jamie to release her. Tasha Green is ghost. Jamie St. Patrick is Jamie St. Patrick. The mastermind is Tasha St. Patrick. Hey, I, I didn't make this up. Tariq said that. You know what? I apologize. I need to make a new video. Tasha Green is the actual mastermind. She used their bodies. She used Tommy Egan's body as an escape goat and blamed the murder on him so she could get away. Get away. Get away. Oh, we just figured it out on live. Tasha St. Patrick was the mastermind. Tasha Green, whatever you want to call her. Ghost. Mm. You know how I know she goes? Because she left her drunk-ass mama. She left her drunk-ass mama. Only a ghost would do that. Ooh. Ooh, I'm a ghost. Ghost ain't got no feelings. I told y'all, Mastermind, Tasha Son, Power Book 5, the spinoff. Yaz the Rock gonna be cooking it. Oh. When I'm right, I'm right. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But damn it, I think I'm right. I think I'm right. Why would this be called Power Book 2 Ghost? And Ghost is dead. No, 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 See, Power Book 3 is called Raising Canaan. Canaan is alive. 
Tasha Green is alive. Oh, so she might be the mastermind. Hmm. Interesting plot twist. That's going in the Tasha Sun series right there. I'm already episode five. Episode five. She's going to be explaining to Yaz the Rock what she used to do back in the day. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, we might not get picked up for season two, but believe me, y'all going to see the pilot at least. Y'all going to see the pilot. <laughs> It might not, it might not even get put into development, but y'all gonna see the pilot. So what y'all thinking? Tasha could be ghost? Or y'all still don't believe she the mastermind? Let me know what you think, man. We trying to figure it out over here. Because I ain't never seen no paperwork that said James St. Patrick was ghost. Did y'all ever see a document laying around with James St. Patrick's signature up under ghost's name? Like it said ghost and then up under it, Jamie St. Patrick. I ain't seen no paperwork. They said they killed Keisha because they had paperwork on her. But I ain't never seen no paperwork ghost saying he was ghost. Can we use that in this situation or no? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I am excited for this episode this week, though, man. It should be a good one. We ate bodies in. <laughs> they saying Tasha ain't the mastermind. Come on, y'all. Y'all gotta give Tasha the St. Patrick some credit now. Mm hmm It was a reach. It was a reach, man. I was trying. I ain't gonna lie. You said, where's Mahoney? Oh, shit. Let me see. Enemies. Would they have Mahoney on here? <laughs> they got Tariq and Tasha on the list of the em uh, enemies. Now, I don't know where Mahoney is, man. Probably sick. Took a sick day. Shit, man. Would you really want to show your face back in New York City after all that shit y'all done been through? Think about it. Six seasons of bullshit. Like, it. it <laughs> It would be hard to live in an environment with a St. Patrick on Like, if you had a St. Patrick living in your neighborhood, you kind of look at it like you kin to the, the Jamie St. Patrick dude, the, the lieutenant governor guy, or his son. You know him? Nah, we ain't no, Okay, cool. Y'all good then. I'm going to say, if y'all, matter of fact, I'm going to have to pull a Celine move. I'm going to have to. Tariq St. Patrick, father, James St. Patrick, mother ghost. Uh, grandma drunk, sister dead, little sister. I don't know where she at. Uh, okay, uh, wait a minute. It said y'all cousins. All you gotta do is go on Facebook. Lou, on uh, you go on Facebook, people be adding people talking about that. My cousin, Man, nigga, we don't care. I do want to see how they're going to do for us. Let me see what Tommy Egan, if they got anything up, uh, updated on him. What are they talking about in Ghost? In Ghost, he was trying to kill Tasha. Faked his death to leave the city. All right. Make a fresh start. Did that, did that. Kill Claudia fleeing to avenge Liliana, uh, Liliana ongoing. Protect JP and D Mac. Man, leave they ass alone. 
protect JP and DMAC. They need to be protecting themselves. I'm gonna have to go back and watch four. I don't. I, I really don't remember a lot of it, to be honest. I do remember JP was broken there. Wait, that's where they had the shootout at the end, right? They had the shootout in the damn like junkyard or something. I'm trying to think, what else was going on? Okay, they had the. They had the nasty nurse. I mean, not the nurse, but the, what was she, the scientist? Oh, yeah, the crazy-ass scientist. Okay, I remember it now. The weak-ass Irish horseman. They came over here and got killed in one episode. Them boys touched the ground. Six hours later, they were laying on it. We'll see how that plays out, man. You know, I'm going to watch it. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, do they have a date for that? It was officially announced March 9th, 2022. It will premiere either late 2022 or early 2023. So they might have it out. No, it's saying 26 May over here. I mean, shout out to Carter Matt. <laughs> I be watching their videos. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Their videos be all calm and peaceful. They do a good job narrating, though. Got to give them their credit. Shit, they got a website. That's I need a website. If I if I made a website, I need somebody to get on there and type it up for me. <laughs> no, they ain't got no date either. They just as stuck as us. Well, if it said in May, this is gonna be over. What we got? How many weekends have we got here? This is episode four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that'll be about right. The 26th of May. That'll be episode 10. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to drop right after May 26th, if they do it that way. Man, I wish they still had it on Sundays, man. I don't know. I never seen why they moved it to a Friday. When would y'all rather have it back on the Sundays that we were watching it or keep it on the Friday? I think once you drop it like on Thursday, it's just like records. Your numbers started counting. Like how many watched it on Thursday night instead of waiting to Sunday night. I don't know if they do it that way for TV shows.
Nah, I don't be seeing nobody talking about nothing. Uh, P Valley season three. I don't, man, that probably ain't gonna come out till like the end of next year, to be honest with you. But shy. Fifth season took place June twenty twenty uh, June twenty twenty two. So, shit, I don't know. I don't even know if they got a date. Let me see. We anticipate the Shaw's release date in twenty twenty three. Well, they ain't got it up here, man. Yeah, everybody got like the same info. Yeah, just June 26th is when it started. Oh, wait, here we go. It says Showtime Network announced premiere date of the Shy Season 6. Next part will return July 30th, 2023. That's all to know on the sixth season. All right. July 30th. I don't know about July 30th, y'all. That don't sound like a, a date that anything need to be dropping. July 30th, also on a Sunday. I don't even know what we'll have going on then. Because the 26 is here. So if that's when uh, four start, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then that'll take us to the July 30th. So, boy, people be looking at your release date like, now nah, we're going to drop after you. <laughs> When you do your drive, we're going to wait. Then we're going to do our drive. That's what's up, though, man. When you got too many shows on at one time, man, that's a lot. But I'm cool with it. We got Snowfall Thursday night. Now we got a little free time. Uh, let me see. There was a show that I was watching. Was it on Netflix? See, it's hard to look up shows on Hulu because it'd be so many different damn networks on Hulu. Dave, tiny, beautiful things. No, I don't know about none of that. None of that piques my interest. Oh, uh, hey, have y'all seen this? Hey, this look like it's going to be straight. I ain't going to lie to you. I do need me something like this. Some suspense. Erotic thriller. Oh, yeah. This show right here is going to be on Paramount. I don't know what day it drops. Hold on. Let me see. April 30th, 2023, man. I'm going to be watching Fatal Attraction. I'm going to give you guys a little background on it. You know what I'm saying? We need something out the streets a little bit. You know, we got Bel Air shit, but we still got to do our thing. Uh, Fatal Attraction TV show 2023. Release date, cast, trailer, and everything we know. We know Fatal Attraction, the 1987. Damn, that's a little bit after Tasha was born. Thriller starring Michael Douglas and Glenn Close are being remade. Hey, it looked like it's going to be straight. I, I got to cut up the trailer, but I'll play a little bit of it. So now the adaptation of the 87 one. 
It's coming to Paramount Plus streaming service. All right, all right. We 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 don't need to know who was in here writing this stuff. We'll figure that out when we watch the show. All right, here we go. It's an erotic thriller. Yeah, an erotic thriller starring Michael Douglas, Glenn Close as a pair of adulterous lovers whose lives become violently entangled. Oh, we get an entanglement. Douglas has a weekend affair with his close friend, Alex. Alex Force. Well, affair with his closest, Alex Force. What the fuck is a close? Who knows? But while the successful family tries to put the relationship behind them, Alex becomes upset. Oh, Lord, Alex. It's psychological thriller that sees Dan contend with that, the infidelity and growing danger that Alex entered. Uh, God damn, I can't. There we go. Don't even remember where we was at. Oh, he's up here. Dan contends with the infidelity and the growing danger that Alex interest presents to him and his family. So Dan got caught up. Dan got caught up because Alex got obsessed. Oh, okay, Dan, but they put that relationship behind them. So Dan seems like he's a good guy. Dan seems like he's going to be trying to do the right thing, but Alex, she didn't understand. Hey, Alex, this is just a one-time thing. You can't be obsessed with me. I got a family. I got a wife and kids at home. You can't break up my happily home. I'm happily married. I made a, I made a mistake, and me and you slept together one time. It was just one weekend. That's it. It wasn't nothing more than that. But it looks like Alex becomes obsessed, and Dan's trying to contend with it. Now, the original got six Oscars. Now, is this going to get any Oscars? I don't know. With the movie being considered a classic, the series will need to retain a sense of dread and mystery. Fortunately, details about the show's characters, cast, and trailers And more point to the Fatal Attraction series being a fresh but faithful adaptation. All right, yeah, we're gonna check it out, man. I just seen the trailer on uh, on YouTube today. I said, damn, it looks straight. It's a big old knife there, girl. Put the dang down. Paramount pretty does. I mean, they do they do a pretty good job with their shows. We'll see. If, it, if if the first episode ain't that good, I probably ain't going to finish it up, but I'm definitely going to give it a try. From what I've seen in the trailer, I said, Dan, they did a good job. The production looked great. Let me see something. See if we can pull something off real quick. They ain't got Mark Dark popping up on my shit, asking me what next. Man, we looking at Fatal Attraction off of a website. They talking about, you want to watch Mark Dark next? Shout out to Mark Dark. But not right now, man. We not talking about power right now. That, that, hey, they know we be watching Mark Dark. They know we be talking about power. Hey, uh, Google, since you be listening to me, Show my videos up there. I got videos too now. Show my video. Up there. Let me get some love up there. They got Mark Dart up there. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa. whoa. This is the Mo Show. They supposed to be ready. If I put this over here, it better be my shit up here next. But they got BMF up here. They got Donald up here. Who else they got on here? Ain't none of this my shit. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let me put this on the screen right here. Let me put this on the screen right here while this buffers a little bit. Why this buffer out? We're going to have my shit on the screen. Uh, 
let that sit there for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Make up some of the lost time. Damn, what is that? Oh, is it Modi Jane? It won't fool the people still watching. Okay, I might have to check his channel out. Who that is? Yeah, I might have to, he got Method Man on there. Who is that? Method Man Davis? Who is that? I don't know. Look like a drug dealer from back in the day. You know it. A little free promo. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, man, look, they got me on websites and shit. You know what I'm saying? We over here looking at Fatal Traction on Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus, holla at me. I'll do a live in studio breakdown of the show. Y'all got me up on here. That's what it looked like, right? It's a Paramount up here. Fatal Attraction. Look, Paramount Plus plus UK and Ireland. Subscribe and they got me up there. Okay. Hey, Paramount, holla at your boy. Paramount, don't hit us with a copyright. I'm about to play a little of this clip, man. Let me chill. I'm going to be pausing it. I'm just saying it looked good. Have you ever Damn, if it ever going to load up, that must be a sign. God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. All right. They don't, they don't want us to play it, but look, they got my shit up there, y'all. Oh, they got Mark back up here. God damn it. There we go. Hey, when you go to this website, if you scroll down here, just click over two times and you'll get to mine. You know, when you when you search Google, my name ain't popping up on the front page. You got to go to page seven. You got to go down the bottom, put page seven, and my shit pop up. Yeah, but I'm cool, though, because guess what? I'm on the top ten pages. That's all I got to look at. I'm on the top ten pages, nigga. Nah, but shout out to Mark Dark, man, OG. That red button. I think you pull it. See, I don't know why it does that. I get on here, this shit won't play. If I we watching Tubi and shit, it's cool until the commercials come on and shit, but. Yeah, it is what it is. Well, I'm going to be watching this on Paramount Plus. If it's good, then we're going to continue to rock with it. If not, I'll get on here and tell y'all, man, that shit was trash. <laughs> well, yeah, we do need to find another show. A show that, see, I like to find shows that we typically wouldn't watch. House of the Dragons, I would have never watched that on my own. But I was like, man, let's try something different. Let me see if I can talk about those kind of shows. Yeah, you know it, OT, top 10. I don't give a, hey, I'm top 10, not 10, nigga. I bet I I can say that. So what, what, what does your resume consist of, nigga? Top 10, not 10? <laughs> what do you mean with my resume consist of? Top 10, not 10? Page 7. What the fuck you mean? Page 7. You better, man, you better do your research. Nigga, I'm moving. I might be on page 6 by the end of the month. Keep fucking around. You know what I mean? You fuck around, I might do 10 hour lives. I'm trying to get to page three at least. <laughs> I'm trying to get to page two. If I make it to page two, I get a trip to the White House. Yeah, them girls from Iowa, they got offered a trip to the White House. I make it to page two on Google. I'm at the White House, shaking hands with the president, waving to the people. Hey, man, hey, 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 hey. I'm up there. I'm up there. Hey, hey, hey. Number two, number two, I made it. Yeah. Y'all going to be mad at me. Y'all going to be like, where Mo at? <laughs> y'all can't see me. I'm on page two. And the reason I said y'all can't see me because I wasn't disrespecting y'all, but ain't nobody clicking page two on Google. <laughs> I'm going to be on page two. Y'all can't see me because y'all ain't looking. Talking about huh, Google me. She's like, all right, what, what, what's your information? I'm like, oh, it's Mo. J. She's looking. She's like, oh, nigga. You got to go to page two. You got to go to page two. <laughs> nah, I ain't overlooking the chat. I see Swarm over there. I, we ain't talking about Swarm right now. We ain't talking about Swarm right now. Nah, we talking about me trying to get on page two. Is, is Swarm going to get me on page two? I'm trying to get the page. I'm on page seven right now. Three clicks and you get to me. Click, click, click. My shit so far, when you go down to the bottom of Google, it say one, two, three, dot, 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 nigga, arrow. You got to press the arrow to get to me. <laughs> you got to press the arrow two times. Boop, 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 and then you see motherfucking page seven pop up.
But that's one thing about me, man. I ain't gonna stop grinding, man. We're gonna keep doing what we gotta do. <laughs> oh man, yeah. You know, every now and then I'm gonna surprise y'all, you know. The rest of the week, I'm probably just gonna be chill, you know what I'm saying? Like a sweater or some t-shirt. I dressed up two days back to back. That's good for the month. We started April off right. Now we get to relax. Now we get to relax. Let me see something. Amazon. What is it? Oh, it's some shit called uh, I might be able to watch that. It's a show called Damn, what is it? It's on free V, it's like on Amazon. I'm gonna be watching that. It seemed like the office. I judge math is. Man, what up, Brillo? Oh, T talking about Swarm Trash. Swarm was all right. I didn't like the ending of it, though, man. They could have just made that like three episodes, just do them all together. But I mean, it was straight. Hold on. Let me find it, man. This show looks like. Nah, it's supposed to be coming up. Damn, where's this mug at? Amazon, they got real movies on here. You start playing this, they shut your whole website down. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna find it. But it's like they interviewing the niggas in court <laughs> and they on jury duty. Court. This. Oh, Brillo, nah, man. Look, I only dressed up because we were talking about how a suit, it could do a lot for a man's image, but it won't change the one still watching. So that's why I wore a suit, you know what I'm saying, to recognize Tate Davis. Did you know that Davis was a gangbanger? Did you know that Davis sold drugs? Did you know that Davis was a killer? Florida man obsession. Obsession is too far, man. I'm too far behind on obsession. I'm trying to tell y'all about the show. I want to watch, man. Let me watch something. Damn. <laughs> now it's some shit where it's like these dudes was well, women on there too, but it's the people on there and they they jury. And they like getting interviewed. I think they it's like. It's like the office, man. Hold on, let me see. Amazon freebie jewelry. Oh shit. They call it jewelry duty. Yeah, here we go, right here. Jewelry duty. Yeah, I was looking at this. What the fuck is this shit? Yeah, I was watching that. I said, now this right here is nice. And this is something I like to watch where I could joke around and bullshit. Premieres April 7th on Amazon. Freebie. New episode stream Fridays through April 21st. Join the discussion about the show in our forums. Let's see what y'all forums is talking about. Is anyone getting it cracking over there yet? Thank you. 
You are now the jury in the matter of Gilgrove versus Morris. When I say jury of your peers, I think that's accurate. So it's like the office and they in there fucking with people. <laughs> So they hit this motherfucker fucking with people when they come here for this damn jury duty. I'm a recognizable public figure. Jury number 54. I'm so happy to be here. I'm going to be upset if I don't get on the jury. Okay. Here we go. All right, so we got a legend. We got a dedication. We got a legend. We got a legend. I want to do the best job that I can. <laughs> hey man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see, man. What I might do, <laughs> I might have to do these on like Discord. I want to watch it. I don't really, I, I want to watch the whole thing with you. <laughs> This is some shit I would go do though. I would sign up for this to go be on jury duty. For real, for real. I'll go do this shit. <laughs> oh man. Jury number fifty four. <laughs> that nigga said, hey, how do you get out of jury duty? <laughs> said, Tell him you're racist. That nigga told the judge. <laughs> that nigga told the judge I'm racist. If I was on fucking... <laughs> They put me on jury duty for Trump. I'm going to say MAGA. <laughs> make a, make a great again. I'm trying to get the fuck up out of here. Oh, shit, dog. This shit going to be wild, man. I don't care what y'all talk about. That shit is fucking funny to me. Say, what well, was Able to be a good juror for this matter. Sir, I'm, I'm uh, racist. Sir, please have a seat. Sorry, for the paparazzi. This is a problem. I know that it's isolated. Isolated. Claude um, is a very interesting individual. He showed up wearing chair pants. They said this nigga showed up wearing chair pants. What the fuck is chair pants? This nigga got crutches on the bottom of the shit, man. What the fuck is this shit, man? Oh my god, nigga. Claude is a very interesting individual. He showed up wearing individual. He showed up interesting. Claude is. Look at that shit. That nigga got crutches on the bottom of his. <laughs> <laughs> and that nigga sitting there with his bag on his knee. <laughs> Put that fucking bag down. Ah. Oh. oh god. <sighs> Oh man. Dog, I gotta give me some fucking chair pants, nigga. I, I promise you, I'm about to order some on if I can find some chair pants on Amazon, I'm gonna order some for <laughs> I'm try to get it by Friday, man. I gotta have some fucking chair pants. <laughs> this is... <laughs> what the fuck is a chair pants? Is that real? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is chair pants? <laughs> oh, 
Uh, that nigga trying to get in the okay, van with yeah, that shit. He should have wearing chair pants. The difficulty is the lack of a van. Jesus Christ. Hi, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. I'm scared. This is an ultimate child that I've been trying to make. Oh, my God. I try not to judge and go too much by its cover, but. Oh, you're next. It's true that you don't want to arrested for masturbating in the movie. Yes, that's true. You know, there's the movie, the Pacific Rim of like, Yeah. I saw that. There is zero around it. This is literally just like reality TV. Oh. <laughs> man, I don't care about you. I'm about to be watching that motherfucker, man. I'm gonna give me some goddamn chair pants too. You're gonna be mad as him. Oh, you got them chair pants. Like, yeah, hating ass nigga. I got the chair pants, nigga. When I wanna sit down, I can sit down. I got chair pants. Hey, when I go to somebody's house, they say, Hey, you can grab a seat. You I got chair pants. I was already gonna grab a seat. I came with a seat, nigga. What you mean? I'm going to a little kid's football games on the weekend. Look, oh kids, I'm out there with my own chair pants. Oh, yeah, that's good right there. Give me some chair pants. Ah. <sighs> Uh oh, wait, did they got chair pants? Oh, it's a portable stick stool pitch. No, oh, man, ain't nobody want that. I want the chair pants that are attached to the back. Pause. Oh, man. Where the black people at? Is the nigga on there? Look, right here. Fabulous. Now, I guarantee you, I'm going to watch this whole thing, man. I like stupid shit like this. That's why I like The Office so much. The Office was a good-ass show, man. I can watch The Office anytime, any day. It don't matter. I just jump in the middle of the episode. I can watch The Office whenever. Look, y'all put the money in the cash app. Put the money in the cash app. I'll hold it. I guarantee I'll finish the whole thing. Yeah, put the money in cash. Everybody go ahead and put 100 in there and hold it. And if I make it past the first episode, I get to keep it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so you got this black guy. Then you got, you got this black man here. Hell, the bailiff is black. Yeah, man, you know, prayer cloth right there. Oh, lady right here is black. We got three black people in one scene. It's three to four in here. What do you mean? What do you mean, OT, where the black people at? They in here? We in here? <laughs> See, these are just the actors, man. You can't, like... These are the actors that they hired. I mean, but the people that are coming in. I think the people that are coming in are real. So, you know, it is who it is. If you get elected, man, just imagine they hit you up, man. Come to jury duty. What the fuck is this? Jury duty. You can't turn it down. I don't know how they send it. They may have been like a fake email or something. They might have to give them some money. I don't know how they doing it, but. Should be cool. This shit got 30 episodes a season. Shit, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. In one month, I watched 30 episodes worth of TV shows. That's fine. Let me see. Uh, recognize I'll be watching it. If y'all ain't watching, y'all ain't watching. I'll be watching it. I don't think this is going to have no 30 episodes because they said they only got 12 jurors and 11 actors.
All right. Y'all see. Y'all be surprised at what I watch, man. I watch a lot of shit that y'all don't know nothing about, man. I be watching shit. I, man, hey, look. I be on there. I, I know how to survive in the wild. I used to watch Man vs. the Wild. I know how to do all that shit. <laughs> I'm like a local legend. April 7th. You know what? What day is April 7th? April 7th is this Friday. You know what? We ain't doing no live on Power Friday. We doing jury duty. Episode one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have some uh, pant chairs or chair pants. What was it called? Damn, was it chair pants? I'm going to have some chair pants. Have a flannel. Yeah, see, it's gonna be a good Friday, all right. It's gonna be a good all day. We'll see. Cause I ain't getting towed up. Not on Friday. Y'all not I'm not on no hand dog this weekend. Man. I'm gonna chill this weekend. I'm gonna chill this weekend. Told y'all yesterday, man. I wasn't right, man. I ain't get up right, man. Y'all had me fucked up in the game. Damn, I ain't gonna lie, though. I wish season two of Last of Us was coming on this year, man. I want to see what they do with that. That shit was cool. Y'all watching this? This Monique? Y'all watched it? I seen like a clip of it. I ain't watched it. A tourist guide to love definitely ain't watching that. What the hell is this show? Beef. Released April 6th. What the fuck is that about? We definitely not watching it. I don't like the title. Transatlantic. What is this? Some superhero shit? I think I heard this. 1940s to help artists, writers, and refugees fleeing from Europe. Oh, no. That might be a little too serious for us. That might be a little too serious for us. You know, I'd have to do some history. And right now with power on, I don't have enough time or power or the mastermind mental <laughs> capabilities to be able to do a little history lesson with this. So, no, nah, I can't watch that. Not yet. American Hustle, Dark to Her Shoes, The Cat in the Hat. Man, what is this? Shit from last year? Here we go. Netflix added 57 new movies. Let's see. The Untold History of the United States. What's that on, OT? Eric said, if y'all see me on Love Island, support your boy. Hey, if you make it on Love Island, if you make it on Love Island, there is a woman on YouTube. Let me know. And I, I'll tell her to, you know what I'm saying, give you a shout out. Queen E, that's my homegirl. She was living in, is she back in Canada? I don't know. But she be doing Love Island and all that stuff. She do a hell of a job over there. That's back when I used to do, um, what's that shit? Damn, what the hell was that? It was the one with uh nephew Tommy on it. I did their little show because I knew somebody that was on there, so I was covering that back in the day. Oh, Ready to Love. Showtime, the untold history of the United States. Let me see. I can watch it on Amazon. Bet.
12 chapter documentary series 2012. Yeah, I'll give this. Oh, I think I may have seen this, to be honest. I told you I'll be on all this stuff, too, man, especially like I told you while I was in Germany, man, I was doing all that. I went to Poland. Like I was, I was big on World War Two. I got a bullet from World War Two. An unspent shell. It's a little dusty. Luxembourg, nineteen forty-four, December, World War Two. Got this while I was over there. Like that's cool, man. You can find all kinds of shit out there in Germany, man. Read my synopsis on the show Beef. Based on the synopsis I read for Beef, it said two people who let a road rage incident get into their mind and slowly consume their every thought and action. Road rage. So what, like they fighting each other? They like battling each other every time they see each other? Like Peter Griffin and the chicken? They get into an accident. I don't know, man. That sounds see. That sounds like kind of hard to explain. That was one reason I never did. Uh, what's that show that they had with Journey uh, Smollett, Smouye, the sister? It was on HBO. I never watched it because it was like, man, I when I turned it on, I was like, ah, it's gonna be too hard to explain. <laughs> I wasn't that talented back then. I couldn't flip that. And I was watching just like that movie. Uh, nope. It was like, all right, it was something in the cloud, but Lovecraft Country. Yeah, I never finished that, but you know what was good, though? Ozarks, man. I, I liked Ozark. I remember back in the day, I was doing one Ozark video a day, man. That was a good times. So this is down the street from where I lived when I was in Germany. It's a city called Trier. Trier, Germany. That was our biggest city. That was the biggest city. I lived over here in Speicher. But yeah, man, it was some cool shit that I got to see over here. Watch this shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Who the hell is Darius? Oh, that's his photo. I was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> so how we lived in Trier, that was where Hitler's Third Reich was. I don't even know how to spell it. W R. So like Hitler's headquarters was right down there in Trier and shit. They also had it's this wall that was built like way, way back in the day, man. It's the only thing standing. Well, the only one left. Everything else ain't got knocked down. Damn, what the hell? Oh, there we go. Hey, Trill, what up, Trill? I was just showing them Trier. So, yeah, this is Trier. This is like the little marketplace stuff over here. It's actually pretty cool. So, this wall was built because it used to be a wall all the way around the city. And this was like one of the little entrances, but everything got torn down. So, this is one like the only last ones left. So, that's before the Germans. 
And then down this way, it's like Hitler's Third Reich, if I can find it. Hold on. See, there go another one of the walls on the other side of the town. Oh, man, they didn't drop me in the right area, man. What the hell? What a train station. Oh, man, they ain't let me get no street view, but that motherfucker right there, though. That shit crazy. And then in here, <clears throat> they got these houses. They like four stories tall, but there's no door at the bottom of the houses. Damn, if I, damn can I? All right, here we go. Damn. I don't know if you can really see it or not, but like these houses over here, you see they ain't, they ain't had like no, what well, they do now, but they didn't have no doors at the bottom. It's just up here. So you used to have to put a ladder up, like, out the window whenever people came home so people wouldn't rob you. So the only way you could get in the house is if somebody was in the house and they lowered the ladder down to you. So they didn't have doors, like, on the bottom. But that's back, way back. That's before, the, like, the, the Nazis and everything. I was just like, damn, that's some crazy shit to see, man. <laughs> All right, let the ladder down. Let the ladder down. Diggers about to whoop your ass. You trying to run. They trying to let the ladder down. But then you got to climb up the ladder. Now they on the ladder shaking it. You, oh, hey, man. Hey, man. I'm just playing, man. I'm just playing, man. I just stole a loaf of bread, man. Get off me. Your ass getting whooped. <laughs> B.A. Sam put the cash out for my chair. And then I went and bought a suit. Nah, man. I had this, you know. I just popped the tag on this. I told you I got a whole bunch of stuff I just never wore. And I'm like, man, fuck it. We're going to hop on here and wear it then. But I only had to wear a suit tonight because we were talking about Davis and Tate. That's all. That's all. That's the only reason we had to do it. Then they got this. It's a uh, where that. This is it. Yeah, here we go right here. Then Damn. Man, why is it acting like this? Come on, man. Drop that thing. So this right here, they said Hitler turned this into like a dance hall. He was having like parties and this motherfucker big as hell on the inside. It's like a big ass dance floor in there. They said Hitler used to have fucking events and shit. I'm like, damn, man. That's crazy to see all of this, man. We don't really have no history in America. Because that wasn't, that wasn't, uh, I forgot who built, I think somebody built this for their wife or to have like a, a party or something and barely use it. I forgot the history behind it. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> I don't even know how to Constance time. Told you that mug is big on the inside too. Let me see. Bye, bye, bye. The Imperial Throne. Now we want some information. We ain't trying to buy no tickets. We want information. Yeah, 
It said this is the largest surviving single room structure from the Roman times. As I say, you go in there, it's just one big old room. It's just like. What are things to see into your ear? Bah, bah, bah. Let me see. Yeah, Puerto Negra, the old Roman gate. Then you got the mall, like down here. You know, this is a little square. They got the two churches, and whoever had the tallest church, you, whoever had the tallest church, you a, you basically a, we got money over here. The churches used to compete, so you'll hear like different churches, they bells will go off. Whoever had the tallest church, you know, say you was a, you top dog in the city. <laughs> Where that? Where that? Here we go. See, they don't be telling you like the um, they were using like a printing room and everything. We not about to do a whole deep dive into there. But yeah, man, that was Germany. Well, where I stayed at, at least. What to do, Trier Nightlife. Now, they got a club out here. They got a club out here, but be careful because them Germans will whoop your fucking ass. The bouncers will get on your shit. I heard many of niggas getting knocked out by security out there. Oh, Lord. We didn't really go. We didn't really go to Trier too much to party. You'd go to like Ramstein. People would go to Frankfurt, but like bees biting. I forgot what that club was called out in Trier, but be careful. They'll whoop your ass. Some of them don't wear deodorant either, so be careful. If you smell the stank, just know it ain't you. <laughs> like, is that me smelling like that? Is that me with the funk that you can smell with a cold? I know it ain't me. I know I wash my ass. They been that motherfucker dancing. Every now and then they'll play some hip hop. It'll be like some Fetty Wap or something. <laughs> some yeah, oh, they do it. And then some techno music will come in. Like, man, what the fuck? Matter of fact, let me see something. I'm going to show y'all my first house. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all my first house in Germany. Hold on. Where is that? Cologne, Dipper, Spain. Right here on the corner, too. Watch this shit. Go down, make it right. Wait, 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 wait. Where's the first circle? Oh, here we go. Peter Dorf. Peter Vons, Ben's Filt. This is my house right here on the corner. This is the house I was living in. Yeah, I know they got a street view. Damn. Anyway, that's my spot right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Three bedroom. I had a basement. It was this big ass red door down there. People would come through, like, hey man, you got somebody locked in. I said, shit, nigga. I ain't got the key to that door. That's the owner's door. I don't go in that door. You know what I'm saying? Good times. I used to have two grills on the backyard. Only one of the garages were electric. The one on this side, this one, <laughs> this one you had to go lift up. Yeah, man, I used to do my thing. My landlord used to be like, can you buy gas on base and fill up the lawnmower? I said, man, you know I ain't supposed to be doing that. I can't do that because it was cheaper on base. And it's a law in Germany. When it snows, you got to sweep off your sidewalk because if somebody gets hurt, they get to sue you. So I had a fucking... I sweep a shovel. I had a shovel from here all the way around. I was like, God damn, man. Damn. 
Mm. Hell yeah, the exchange had them deals. They want to buy cigarettes and shit. They oh no. Yeah, so this is my first spot. I was right behind the base. Y'all know me, man. If I got to be at work at 7 30, I'm waking up at 7. But the base is just right here, though. The only thing is, I got to drive all the way around the base to this side to get in. So at my house, you hearing the jets. You hearing the jets. You been there asleep, that motherfucker. Yeah, you hearing the jets, but shit. I could leave the house at 7.15 and get to work at 7.30, so I was good with that. Used to watch the little kids over here. They used to have the adults will play. The adults will come over here on like a Saturday afternoon. I just go over here and watch. They give you beer and shit. Couldn't speak no Dutch, but I was over there just chilling with them, <laughs> drinking beer, watching them play soccer. They drunk as hell playing soccer too. I'm like, damn, y'all athletic. Yeah, yeah, that was a spot. Then we had like a little uh, Italian restaurant right down the street. It was like, I don't know where that motherfucker was at. That's my street. So, oh, the Italian restaurant back this way. Yeah, it's, yeah it's back that way. Shit was cool, man. It's a good life. I mean, we should drive two hours. We drive from Spang Dollar. All the way over here to V's by in two hours to go hit the club. Friday after work. Because my, my barber, he knew every day. Well, every Friday, I got my hair cut at 3.30. Kept the line Steve Harvey. You feel me? 3.30, go get the haircut, go hit the gym, go hit the stove, hit the house, take a shower, get on the good foot, hit that two-hour to V's Biden, rent you a little room. Used to be able to get the rooms for the L. -O. I'm talking about nice rooms. It was this place called uh, Penta Hotel. Oof. Oof. For 80 euro, well, you got you a king-size bed, nice living room. And for 90 euro, you got you a two floor, top floor, got a bed on it downstairs. You got a pinball machine. I don't even know why they had a pinball machine in there, but nigga, for a hundred goddamn dollars, why not? Give me the pinball machine. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. You in there drinking, you pulling up, you having a little pregame. Go, 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 go. Bing, bing, bing. You know what I'm saying? You chilling. You chilling. Let me see how much that shit. Cost nowadays. Okay, saving ten dollars a night. All right, select the days. Yeah, so when you come in here in the in the the lobby, they had that over there on that TV. It's a PlayStation Four in there. Hopefully, they got a PlayStation Five. But they got a PlayStation 4 over there with FIFA. They got the little bar over to the left. Look, look, you get a little pinball machine in your room. For $80 a night, you get a little pinball machine in your room. And this is just a regular room. I ain't never seen the pinball machine in the regular room. They got the pool table up there. Look, you got your nice little setup. Mm-hmm. There you go, Kendall, your drinks. With the cucumbers in them. Oh, see, they got that PlayStation 4 right there. You go over there, man, you got unlimited game plan. You chilling. This place right here is what they would call the vibe. Now, a lot of dudes, they, they didn't you know, say I was like 27, 28 when I first went here. Shit, man, I'm spending that 80. Man, it was fools that would drive out there and drive back. Man, I'm spending 80 euro. I'm coming in this room, you know, <laughs> dropping the bags off, going to the bar, getting a little bit of food on the stomach. You know what I'm saying? Watch whoever playing that, shoot some pool, drink a little bit, go to the room, drink a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Get ready for the evening. Ready for the evening. Yes, Kendo, you can get concierge. Oh, yeah, you call it. Hey, yo, bring it to the room. They say, oh, we got you. We got you. Look, they got niggas in the living room playing the guitar. What hotel you know they let you play the guitar in the living room? You coming in. You Hey, now, if you want to do it a little bit bigger, now, this is in V's body. Look, the bar is jumping. I ain't never seen the bar jumping like that. Usually, just be four niggas in there, me and my niggas. <laughs> like all y'all niggas, except my niggas. 
Oh, yeah, they getting too crunk. We were never this crunk at the bar. We were at the bar drinking, but we wasn't at the bar like this. Yeah, hell no. Oh, let me see what these rooms is running real quick. The studio apartment. That's what they calling it now. The studio apartment. We just going to say this Friday to Sunday. Even though we only stay at these hotels for one day. You just stay here one day and. We stay here for one day, then we hit the next town. We go an hour back to where the military base is, and that's the halfway point between where we live and out here. Now they ain't got no rooms. Oh, yeah, it was a good time. It was always a good time. It's always a good time. You rolling with Mo, man. You always had a good time. So that was the that was the place we upgraded to. The first place we used to go to was EMB. I think B and B. What it damn, what is it? B N B? Come on now. Oh, y'all in France, man. We want uh B and B. Now, this is a place like for the people. I mean, you really don't have to have money, but if you want to save, so it's $79. Now, these rooms, these rooms were ahead of their time because I was doing this in 2014. So the first time I went here, this hotel right here, $79. When I was over there, you just get your little, you just get your little bitty room. It was like $50. So of course it didn't went up, but $79 for one night by yourself, that ain't bad. Let me see what they got here. Now, this is a place a little bit different. When you come in here, you don't have to check in like at the front desk. You just there's a, a computer on the wall. You just put your last name in and you put the confirmation number in and you get a ticket. So when you go to your door, there's no key. You just put your code in. And I seen this in 2014. I said, damn. OK. This ain't bad. So let's see what the, the double room is looking like. We just need the one queen, though. You know what I mean? We matter of fact, we need to see what it looked like. More details. Here we go. And y'all ain't got no pictures. Anyway, the rooms ain't straight. For fifty dollars, you only in there. You know, saying you stay in the night to hit the club anyway. But this is where we stayed originally. And then we were like, man, fuck it. Look, they got rooms with three beds in here. So if you, your homeboys, y'all can't afford it, but you know y'all can't drink and drive, y'all can easily get this room. Clubs don't close till six. Come back here, sleep for four hours, and then dip back out the base. This is the handicap room. They're easily accessible. It's on the bottom, usually in the back right. But yeah, see, like, just a little bitty setup and shit. You got, like, it was perfect for, for us. You know what I mean? It was perfect for us. $50 a night. But if you really wanted to step it up on Friday, I mean, on, on Saturday night. They had bidets. What is that? But then you got this hotel right here. Now, if you wanted to ball out on a Saturday, you know what I mean? If you really wanted to do your thing on a Saturday, you stay at Saks. Now, this is the one in Frankfurt, but this is still going to give you an idea, you know what I'm saying, on a Saturday night. This is what Saturday nights look like. Saturday nights now, hey. You dropping that bag off on a Saturday night. Saturday nights at a Saks. If you book it early enough, because Monday I would come into work and I would book my shit for the weekend, because I know for sure I'm going out this weekend. But if you tried to get there, you spending about 140, 150 a night. Now, this room is nice here. 
they got uh some of them they got where the glass sees through i think this one might be the same one but the glass sees through the the shower and you got like this little curtain oh yeah now this is this is if you want to do it a little bit bigger but back in the day man you could get these rooms for a hundred dollars yeah this is in frankfurt i ain't never been in the one in frankfurt but shit still cool as hell though this is the first time where I where I noticed that the design, I said the European design is just different. Like I was seeing the headboards with the lights and up on here, I got a button over here. I got a, I like, damn, we ain't had this in the States. A BAH day. Oh, I, I, I don't know what y'all guys are, are saying. <laughs> I don't know what the BAH day is. Bid it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, good times, man. Real comfortable, too. You being there knocked out. I I, I really, hey, does anyone else know what a bid day is? B day? What, what, what is that? I don't understand. We well, yeah, Germany was straight. Got to do a little bit of traveling. Oh, the toilet. Nah, not over here. Not in Saks. Most of the time, you're not going. <laughs> Germany's different. <laughs> Germany is different. Germany really does their own thing. From what I've seen when you go to like France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany has its own. I don't know, man. It is. Germany's different. <laughs> I fuck with it, though. I, I'd go back if I lived in an actual city. Like if I was close to Frankfurt or Wiesbaden. Or like Kaiser Slaughter, cool. But where we was at, man, it was pure country, man. You wake up in the morning, you smell cows, ass. Like, God damn, it stink out here today. This is where my bullet came from, up here in Luxembourg area. So over here. Then I had a homeboy. We drove from, uh, where are that? We drove from Kaiserslautern up to Amsterdam <laughs> or wherever it was over here. Yeah, we drove right up to here and then we took a we took a ferry. Well, not a ferry, but a tram up under the water. You drive up on a train. That was the first time I ever seen that shit either. You drive up onto a train and then some of you go up onto the top of the train. Some of y'all at the bottom and you go through here up under the water. So, damn, this is cool. I ain't know they had all this. And you just sit on the train inside your car. Just a rocket. Make sure you turn your car off. Shit, this is where I got locked up at. Over at Amsterdam, downtown too. Good old Amsterdam. Oh, man. But I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. What we got tomorrow? Wednesday? Oh, what we got? Oh, I'll be on Brillo's channel tomorrow. Uh, we got a, I forgot what it's called. It's like a school thing. Where we're going to go over the different lessons that were in all of the episodes. So Brillo got all that together. You know, I can't put piece together nothing like that i can't put nothing together like that but we're gonna jump on there see how that go i might end up doing a live we might do a movie connection tomorrow night or just a short one a little two hour hour i don't know we'll see yeah i've been to the red light district but the red light district ain't like how people think i mean yeah you know it goes down over there i mean you wild out but 
in Europe, it, it's just a different lifestyle. They got kids over there. You go to red light districts, there's kids out there, families walking through there. It, it's just different, man. It's not all frowned upon like in America. Motherfuckers go as a tourist spot. In America, they covering the kids' face over there. The kids is running around. They next to the water and stuff. Because it's a damn river that <laughs> they got the little channels that are going through there. Man, Amsterdam is wild. But I like Amsterdam, though. No, I'm just saying for the people that ain't been. Like, the red light district ain't really, it ain't bad. Just don't get over there and get caught buying none. <laughs> Look, it's a tourist spot. They got the big camera on here talking about, yeah, the red light district. Look, they just got the river down the middle of it. <laughs> Shit's crazy times over here. Let's jump on into the red light district. Look, you just walking. <laughs> you just walk in and you can fall in the water. You can just fall in the water. You just be walking around. <laughs> you be out here eating, but man, it's different over there, man. People like in the States, motherfuckers that get to fight and someone that got thrown in the water. <laughs> but yeah, the red light district ain't nothing, but just they're really just walking. Let me say, uh, militant homie. Well, we just talking about the time when I was over in uh, Germany and stuff. We ain't really talking about nothing. Shit, you can smoke over there too, though. Smoke a little bit, drink a little bit, do what you want. Just stop in any of these cafes. Well, most of them, you'll see the menus on the wall. You can, you know, what I'm saying, get what you want. But Amsterdam is nice. I will recommend to see it like towards the summertime. I went up there one time in when we go. Oh, we went in July. It was kind of cool. Yeah, was I? Hold on, let me see something. Was it July? Yeah, I was over there wild out. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was over there wilding out. <laughs> I'm talking about as far as like being in the cafe shops. I wasn't buying nothing. I was just in there, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. I, and when I was growing up, I never knew that the diary of Anne Frank. I didn't know that that was in Amsterdam. You know, when I was a kid, I always thought all of like all of that stuff happened in Germany. Yeah, so if you want to go to Anne Frank's house, book your stuff online and get there early. If you don't book it online, you might not get in. Is it this one? Yeah, man. So if you want to see Anne Frank's house, get there early or you're going to be waiting in line. Yeah, I mean, waiting in line, waiting in line. Nah, man, ain't going to rent a room out, man. Come on now. So it's crazy. Like they live right here on the water, too. You know, I only been in there. I went in there once. We didn't have a lot of time, but. Yeah, see, so you got a, a line start over on the side. They live right there on the water, man. That's just so crazy to be seeing this stuff in real life. So you got to go through, like, the little museum on the bottom. Uh, Torn, I'm probably going to watch it tonight. I don't know. I really, I, uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll probably check it out. I'll probably check it out. Matter of fact, I think I got something. Hold on.
Rolling, rolling, rolling. Are you going to watch it, Tori? So here I go in Amsterdam. This is 2017. This is the last time I went. You already know how I was thugging. You already know what I'm on. You already know what I'm on. I said, shit, nigga, it's going to be my last time in Amsterdam, nigga. Smoke something, bitch. <laughs> you already know what Mo was on. I told my boy, I told my homeboy, I said, don't, hey, don't do this. Don't be like me. Be better than me. Be better than me. You got a career. I said, look, this is my last time to answer them. I don't know the next time I'm going to come to Europe. Last time in Europe, I said, fuck you. I'm about to smoke something. True story. True story. Hear me out. And I can get my boy, my boy right here. I stayed with him in Arizona for a little bit before I moved out to California. Like when I was in between, you know what I'm saying, in between my shit and getting ready to move out here. So this night, mind you, I, I was in the military. So I wasn't used to smoking. It's been a while. Man, I got so high that night. Nigga, I went to sleep by the bar. I'm over by the bar like this, right? I dozed off, and these girls came. I don't, I don't know where they were from, but they spoke a little bit of English. So they're like, hey, you in the line? They didn't know I was asleep. I, I'm, on the, I'm standing up like this. they like, you in line? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. So <laughs> after I left, it's like the bar was like in the middle part. I walked behind the bar and I ended up on like this, like this little stairway. Nigga, I was on the stage with some fucking UK rapper. My boy, like, hey man, he came down, like, what was you doing on stage? I was like, oh no, them niggas dap me up. I just walked with them. Cause I walked behind the bar. And I ain't know where the fuck I was at. I just woke up. I woke up like, God damn. They dap me like, oh, so I guess they thought that I was working or like one of the promoters or some shit. So I went on the stage with these niggas. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Nigga, what are we doing up here? Man, I was so goddamn high that night, man. I said, yeah, I got to chill out, bro. Because we came upstairs because it was early and we didn't know where we need, you know what I'm saying? We didn't know nowhere to go. So when we came in here, Paul's. We got some drinks and wasn't nobody downstairs. So we walked upstairs. They said they got like a smoking room. So I'm like, all right, bet. Let's go see. I go up there and these three, they in here. So me and my dog, we sit here, we chilling. They like, hey, you using this ashtray? We like, nah, y'all got it. So then they started talking to us. Like, oh, y'all American. We like, yeah. And I guess this dude's like half American or some shit. His dad is like German and his mom was American or not German, but uh, what are they? The Netherlands, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I guess he was like half American or some shit like that. So then he was like, "Oh yeah, y'all cool." So then he was like, "Huh, you want to hit one?" So I was like, "Huh, I hit that motherfucker." I was like, "That yeah, shit straight." So I'm finishing my drink. Me and my boy, we talking. So they rolling up. The girl next to me, she roll up. She like, "Huh?" I'm like, "Shit, I ain't passing now, no weed." She said, you can have that one. I said, oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Man, that was a good-ass time that night, dog. That was a good-ass time. Because right after this, we went up to Amsterdam for two days. We turned back around, came back to Germany, dropped him off. And then my homeboy, his dad had flew in. So his dad had never been to Amsterdam. They were supposed to go out with us, but... <laughs> My homeboy, he went to sleep. So when we knocked on their door, that's why we here by ourselves. Because we knocked on our homeboy's door. And his dad was like, nah, man, he sleep, man. He ain't doing nothing. This is my young nigga, too. So his dad, like, he ain't doing nothing. We're like, all right, if you want to go out and get a drink with us, you can. But since he didn't, that's why we went to the club. We was just going to go get some drinks. But then we ended up here because it was just me and him. we like, man, fuck it. We ain't got his dad with us. 
even though his dad probably would have went to the club too. But you know what I'm saying? We just like, but fuck it. So shit, man. I went in there, man. I'm like, man, we having fun, nigga. Fuck it. <laughs> I wasn't like sleep, sleep. I wasn't. I was just over there, like, damn. It wasn't even really sleep. It was more like pff, floating like a motherfucker. But they tapped me. You know, I'm playing the cool. So I just roll around like because, <laughs> like I said, the bar was in the middle, but it was like a little like a little wooden fence. But it went all the way up to the ceiling. So I was kind of like sitting over in the corner and they were trying to get in. So after they did that, I'm like, let me get through here. And I just went behind the bar and the niggas, they came like two minutes. I'm looking. I'm like, man, what the fuck? It's kind of dark back here. The dudes came by. Security ain't say nothing. Security just walked by me. I guess he thought I was supposed to be back there. But that's how it is over there in Europe. They don't. They ain't really tripping. They just like fuck it. Whoever back here, who's this random guy with a hat and a blunt in his mouth? <laughs> so they dab me up. I'm following them. Like okay, this must be another way to. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, all right, we just gonna go and come out the other side. Like okay, there's gonna be some stairs, and it takes us up the back way. I ain't know. I just follow. We went up a couple stairs. I'm like, man, what the. And I walked back off the stage. I drank a little bit. And I looked I was like, no, nah, I ain't supposed to be up here on thing because this niggas is rapping. <laughs> but after that, I was moving and grooving, though. I was, I snapped out of that. It was a good time, man. It was a good time. Well, that was my last time in Amsterdam because we went back to the spot. Uh, the next day we chilled because we turned around and 4th of July was in. No, not 4th of July. Before 4th of July. This is the weekend before 4th of July. We turned around, went to Paris for two days. No, for one day. It was one or two days. We drove back. And then the next week I flew to Croatia. Man, it was a good ass year, bro. 2017, I ain't never traveled like that. 2017, every month I was trying to hit somewhere. Good times too. I wonder whatever happened to them women. I should have asked them to get me a drink. Yeah, I'm gonna need something to wash this down with. You see my cup about empty, baby. <laughs> go ahead, let's go all the way. Get me a drink, a double henny. <laughs> straight. <laughs> you know that's what I was on over there. That double henny straight. No mix. Let's go. Yeah, man. Crazy shit. You know, I I never met J. Cole, but last year, true story, me and Trill, why who, when we went to London, swear to God, <laughs> we sitting at the little uh, chicken spot eating. J. Cole's people come in, the dude, they sit like at the table right next to us. And I look and I see a Dreamville backpack and no, like, you know what I'm saying? No shade or nothing. But I was thinking, I was like, man, I, don't, I ain't never seen nobody with a Dreamville backpack. But we knew that he was performing at Wireless. And uh, we were going to Rolling Loud after that, too. So we were like, damn, I'm talking to them. They cool as hell. We met, like, the graphic designer. Man, I be meeting some random motherfuckers. It's cool, though. Now I was like, hey, where Cole at? I got to holler at Cole real quick. Matter of fact, just get cold on FaceTime. Let me talk to him. Let me talk to him. But now nah, they were cool. I'm not going to make it seem like we just sat there and had conversations and shit. Because it was their group. And we seen, because we walked past their hotel. And we seen them hopping out the van. We were joking around like, what rapper is that? So we went in there at eight. They sat next to us. We just talked to them a little bit. That shit was cool. You just beat some random motherfuckers. Over, hey, overseas is... Just different, man, you know? Hell, I told I showed y'all I was in that Ciroc commercial. <laughs> I, I gotta find I gotta find the uh the fucking commercial, but y'all seen I was in the camera. I'm doing my hell yeah, I was in a motherfucking Ciroc commercial just on some random night shit. Like, oh well. <laughs> I got a bottle that says Ciroc boy on it. You know what I'm saying? Ciroc Mo, Mo, happy birthday. Cause I was in that shit. Like, man, random shit happens. Everybody got a life story, y'all. <laughs> I just run into some wild shit.
uh, what's the old boy name? Shit, we was going to uh, fucking roll on loud. DDG was on the plan like, damn, what the nigga doing on over here with us? But I said, he doing the right thing, man. He's saving money. Like, plus, when you go into them little bitty places, you're going to have to take those smaller airlines. But in Europe, they're different, man. You flying in Europe, country to country, maybe like $80, $100. Hey, yeah, I am just a, hey, I ain't a passport, bro. I just use my passport, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder what happened to this guy, man. I wonder if either one of them was his girl. I should have got his Instagram. Hell, I met Ziggy. <laughs> I should have I should have got his Instagram. I, I probably would have met another dude. I, I mean, I would have been plugged in by now, man. I'm bullshitting. I should have got his information. You never know. My dog up here, they call him the ghost of Amsterdam. He had two baddies with him. He said, I'm pulling up with two of them, and I'm supplying the block with the draw. I said, oh, Lord, this nigga is ghost. This nigga, he ain't even got no eyeballs. This is ghost. This is ghost. Good times, man. Let me get the fuck out of here. Well, yeah, man, there go a little, little tour of a little bit of Europe. <laughs> cool. Well, y'all remember we was over in Slovenia. We was thugging it over here <laughs> for a month. Hey, Croatia is actually pretty straight, too, man. We be going to this little spot right here. Well, we used to. I ain't been out there in a while. Navalja. Yeah, Croatia straight. I need to go back to Athens. Only did, what, four days there. Rome is straight, too, but I ain't get to go out in Rome, man. It was cold. I want to see the city at the nighttime. Oh, hey, if you, you joking around? You, I still have eight. I still got like eight fucking vlogs from last year when I went over. I ain't even took them off my damn. Or do I have? Them? Hold on, real quick. See, we ain't even supposed to be on here this long. It's 10 o'clock. All right, I'm going to do like five minutes. Hold on. <clears throat> Tree tone helicopter. Bye, bye, bye. Helicopter. I thought I had him on this motherfucker. Hmm. No, I don't know where they at now. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, don't play. I still got. I got. I still got shit. Now, nah. I still got shit. Well, it's looking like the ticket booth is actually closed for the day. But it looks like it's saying it's about twenty euros, so roughly twenty five dollars. This guy was for like forty hours. I think forty eight hours. So you can get, you can get, you know, two days to come to Chicago. Now, since they closed it down for whatever reason, you know, you have to scout for the work. Yeah, man, I got, I got, hey, I got some shit in the arsenal now. If I want to start a travel channel, uh, I could drop 10, 15 video right now. Uh, I, I want to, man. It's just the editing. I got to hire somebody to edit. I ain't going to lie to you, man. Like, it's the editing part that I'd I be like, man, damn. Yeah, this is right after my damn wreck, too. My damn face was toe up. This is Barcelona. 
So y'all were just recording this shit. Oh, this is an actual cathedral. Hey, this mug is nice on the inside. I'm on the roof of the cathedral right now. This motherfucker, hey, on the inside, this thing nice. Let me not say mother effer. This, this is on the roof. Let me see if I got some of the inside. Let me see one on. Yeah, I got to get somebody to edit. If I'm going to do that, I got to have somebody edit. I got, like, no lie, I got about... Yeah, man. So, this, like, this is my 360 camera. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? We record everything up above. Uh, Vatican City. <clears throat> yeah. See, I was trying some shit. I got like if I use this on the app, like I said, it records around everything. So I, like I just set shit down and I do like time lapses. And like as you zoom out, you can do all kinds of other shit with this camera. But I just don't be, I don't know, man. I ain't got time to sit down and edit it. You know what I mean? But yeah, I went to Vatican City. The uh, the other video I was showing, it was right uh, down the street. Let me see. So like it. This shit built out of gold stuff. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole bunch of shit up here, man. But I mean, I got a lot. I got a lot of footage. Like legit in this photo that I'm looking, I got eight, at least eight that I ain't put together yet. And I definitely want to use this camera a little bit more, man. That 360 feature is nice, man. I love that. Oh, uh, that's Fountain City. That's Barcelona. <laughs> Travel my ass to bed. Oh yeah, this hey, this shit crazy too, man. Like, I forgot. I ain't gonna lie to you. I forgot all the history off of this place. Hold on. So, what happened? I think they like bought some. They like bought all the land, and people were building shit on there. I like, man, what the hell? I don't know, but it was cool though, man. They got all them pillars in there. I said, damn, boy, y'all nice. Y'all got it. It's like Gaudia Mountain. So those pillars that I just showed you, this is what's on top of it. Like all of this is sitting on top of those pillars that were down there. And like each one of these houses, they different, they different people's houses, but they were, they literally, man, it was weird, man. Hold on. Let me.
Now y'all got me talking about all this other shit. Man, what Dre doing on the screen? Oh, I forgot what this motherfucker was. Anyway, man, I'm about to get the hell up out of here, y'all. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, like I said, I'll be on Brillo's channel tomorrow night. Then, of course, Thursday, we got Snowfall. We got the first reaction for Power. Friday, we got the live after show discussion for episode four. Sunday, we got Bel Air. Pretty busy week, man. We're going to do it, though. Man, thank y'all for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Everybody hit that like button before you head on out of here. Support the channel. Cash apps at the bottom of the screen. M-O-E-D-O-T-J. Thank y'all for watching. And I'm out.